Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 268. I'm your host, Chris Britton. Let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me again in the studio this week is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Let's get rowdy indeed. We have another special guest. He's been on here before, but we just love him so much we had to bring him back on again. And it actually means a lot to me because this is my last episode. So I'm seriously thankful for you to be here, and that is super fan Christian Bogan. What's going on, man? Uh, not too much, guys. I'm just, as always, it's a... <laughs> It's my pleasure to just be on here to talk with you guys. Well, we are going to talk about all kinds of uh, news that dropped. We are getting uh, previews from, let's see, SDCC. We are getting sculpts. We're getting all kinds of stuff. We're going to play a little bit of Bad Samaritan because I just thought it's definitely something I want to leave off on uh, as a note uh, that I do want to leave off on. And then uh, we're just going to have a little bit of fun tonight. So we like to normally start us off on Dial H with what made us happy this week. Calder, start us off. Um, I know this going to be for a lot of people is that San Diego Comic-Con happened this weekend. I'm not going to say uh, what you probably think it is, because I can honestly care less about most of the stuff that happened this weekend. But what made me really happy were all the new action figures. You know, one thing about me is like I really like wasting money on little plastic superheroes, and that comes in a variety of forms. So we're getting new reissues of Endgame figures, like a 2012 Captain America with an even better backside and Loki Spear. We're getting, like, the Iron Patriot. We're getting all sorts of new comic figures. We're getting a new Squirrel Girl. She's going to come with a little moped. There's seriously just a ton of new Marvel Legends and some hot toys that are going to uh, punch a pretty big size hole in my wallet here in a few months. But they're just beautiful action figures, and I, I just can't wait to uh, buy them and put them on a wall and never touch them again. That's what I'm excited for. That's made me really happy. <laughs> okay, hypothetical question. Instead of a scooter with Squirrel Girl, would you rather it be like Koi Boy and Chipmunk Hunk? Because I think that oh, I thought you were awesome. going to say Squirrel Copter. I, I totally would rather have the, the, the Squirrel Great Lakes Girl Avengers or whatever. Um, yeah, dude, I would so prefer those. They're doing her in a Rider series, and I don't think uh, Koi Boy or Chipmunk Hunk uh, have got the comic book clout to be uh, in plastic form yet. They're just too niche and small. I wouldn't mind a little Howard the Duck thrown in with her, though. That'd be pretty nice. They, they wasted a awesome two-pack on a Deadpool and Hitmonkey, which I don't think I could care less about, so uh, that could have definitely been used for something better. But, like, yeah, if we would have got her squirrel gig, or, like, a Doctor Doom covered in squirrels, that'd be dope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so that will be fun when we get to see all those. And let's go ahead and jump over to Christian. What made you happy this week, man? Well, before I, uh, you know, go ahead and say that, I have to ask Calder. Now, when you say Captain America's backside, are you referencing America's butt? That is 100%. Yes, correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just got to make sure that's conform, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. So this weekend, you know, kind of piggybacking off of what Tiamu said, being mushy, um, getting to spend a lot of, like, family time together up north. Um, it, that's Michigan term for just traveling upstate. <laughs> um, we uh, we just got to camp out in some cabins over the weekend, and it made me realize how much of a sense of humor that my kids, like, how much it is just like mine that my kids have. And uh, there's this new joke that, you know, they've been doing with me. It's been a lot of fun, uh, which reminds me, hey, Calder. Yes. Calder? Yeah. I'm sorry, Calder. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, never mind. Oh, oh yeah, that's hilarious. That's funny. That's funny. I was like, I was like, man, I'm gonna have to edit all this out. Never mind. It's a joke. <laughs> yep. So. Okay. Yeah, no, that. I'm sorry. I had I had to do that. Talking for the rest of the show. <laughs> you guys are jerks. Thank Thank you for pulling that on Calder and not me. <laughs> uh, by the way, Colter takes it so well. He's such a good sport. 
Yeah, no, he just hates us for life. It's good. But that's that's <laughs> awesome, man. You got to spend time with your family. That's what matters. Yeah. Um, and yep. in the same exact vein, what made me happy this week was Jaylene and I decided to do one last trip getaway to just spend time together and not worry about anything. So she took time off, and we drove down to Nashville, Tennessee. I, I have been through Nashville about a billion times, but I've never actually stopped in the city so we just spent uh, a little over 48 hours just enjoying the city and doing all these like really awesome cultural things for the the city of music down there it's really cool we had such a great time and it, it was a really awesome note for us to leave off on so that that's <laughs> genuinely what made me happy this week but we are not only here to hear christian bogan's terrible jokes that are also super hilarious <laughs> Uh, we are here to talk about HeroClix and other new uh, nerd-related content, so let's jump into that in the new section. And also because I know so it'll make somebody else happy. All right, so like I said earlier, we do have a bunch of stuff that dropped at San Diego Comic-Con, and we're going to get into that, but, and we haven't done this in a while, but it just, this hit the other day, and I thought it was actually such a good article, I really, really wanted to talk about it. So Polygon.com actually came out with, um, and the reason they came out with this is probably because uh, at San Diego Comic-Con, there's... Lots of other things that are dropping outside of Heroclix. <gasps> I know. So because we got Far From Home, it, it's already at, been out in theaters, and that is the official end of Phase 3 for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they are moving forward with starting to release information about Phase 4. One of the upcoming movies that is going to be in Phase 4 is about the Eternals. And I love the Eternals. I do, and I know a lot of people out there that are like, I have no idea who these people are other than a few pieces that came out in the Mighty Thor set. I mean, yeah, you're, you're probably – I completely understand because they're a really obscure team, but the fact that they're getting their own movie, I want to harken back to the fact that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> they were like a Z-list kind of group in the comics – and then all of a sudden, they got their own movie, and it went so well that it is basically a household name of superheroes now. So I'm hoping that that is exactly what happens with the Eternals. And Polygon.com came out with an article that is titled, Everything You Need to Know About Marvel's The Eternals, as just kind of a, a primer of everything that you need to know. I will link this in the show notes, but it does go into the background of like how they were created, what they were supposed to be modeled after kind of like how the sausage was made as far as the creation of comic book characters. Because if you didn't know, Jack Kirby is actually the creator of the Eternals. Well, he did not create the Eternals until he came back to Marvel. He left Marvel, and he went to work for their rival, DC, where he created the Fourth World. The Fourth World is like the new gods, and you had Darkseid and, and all those characters. Well, the Eternals were his creation once he came back back to Marvel, and it was like kind of a ripoff of himself. He created this new like little like sub world with the Eternals and made them like their whole background story. And, and it, what has always been really interesting to me about the Eternals is how they kind of retconned Marvel history so that the Eternals were actually really important, even though they weren't up to that point in like real lifetime. Uh, but they... They uh, ended up being kind of like gods, and that's why all of their names resemble a lot of, like, Greek, Roman, Pantheon names. So, like, you have Icarus, and that one's pretty on the nose, but you have characters like uh, Makari or Makari, however you want to pronounce it. He's supposed to be Mercury from the Roman mythology, Greek-Roman mythology. And then you have, like, Thena, who is clearly Athena, and he basically just ripped off, like, the, this pantheon, made them into Marvel comic book characters, gave, kind of gave them all their own, like, individual powers, but they all also have some of the same powers. Like, they can all fly, and they're all immortal and, and stuff like that. And then the retconned Marvel comics so that they were actually the original 
uh, Greek gods. So you have other pantheons in the Marvel Universe. Like, you have your Norse gods. You have your actual Greek gods. So Zeus is a real character in there. Uh, but then there's also the Eternals. So they're, like, on level with some of these pantheons. And I always thought that they deserved a lot more credit than what they were given. But Marvel just decided over the past however many decades to just not use them very often. And there's only, like, five volumes of them. And it's really easy to, like, sit down and, like, go through them and stuff. And it's just really worthwhile. But if you don't want to read any of those, you should read this primer. It might give you a little bit of uh, a, a, at least a semblance of appreciation for the Eternals. That's, that's kind of my, my plug for the hope of the future. Uh, Calder, you you don't know anything about the Eternals, right? <laughs> right? Well, it was it was pretty good uh, seeing you recap how the uh, Jack Kirby's Eternal Sausage is made, and I was pretty curious <laughs> about that from the beginning. That's gonna be served for breakfast <laughs> and soon for you. That Eternal is sausage. <laughs> that is an episode title if I've ever heard one. <laughs> All right, well, Jack fantastic. Kirby's I, breakfast. I, my job here is done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you uh, no, yeah, they have a really interesting cast uh, that they said was going to be in the movie, and I, I I was curious about it since I actually originally uh, knew nothing about the Eternals, and all of a sudden we got them in Thor, and then all of a sudden I sat across from a year of mine and at least three Eternal characters who I didn't know who the heck they were uh, almost every single time I went to play Heroclix. So, yeah, no, it's going to be good to know a little bit more about these guys. Yeah, I mean, it, in you know, the one character that everybody should know right now is uh, Cersei because that's being played by Angelina Jolie, right? Yeah, and who doesn't, and who doesn't know? I mean, third world kids know who Angelina Jolie is. They want to get adopted by her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't but, know. Uh, yeah, we're going to leave that in. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, so, that is really cool. And, and it's really good, probably, for Marvel to bring in a big uh, actor or actress like that into the movie because it's going to bring in people that were already fans of Angelina Jolie. I personally like Angelina Jolie. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. So, oh, I'm like, are, this are. is really cool. What are you guys uh -huh. saying? I, I'm just you saying, you were talking quite a bit about Angelina and Jolie before the podcast. Just <laughs> <laughs> It's those lips, man. It's those, oh, it's those lips. <laughs> it's the lips. Okay, well, uh, hopefully maybe I sold you guys on that. Uh, and then if you guys out in podcast land want to read about it, just get in the show notes, and you, can, you are more than welcome to read this, or at least – Give them clicks because this was a really well put together uh, article. Having actually read all of the stuff that I've literally read everything that uh, the Eternals have ever been in, so, because there's not much stuff out there. So I'm like, yeah, that's that's a really good recap. So this is it. This is what you need. It's uh, that's uh, pretty good. So that's that. Uh, we will move on. We'll get into the hero clicks related stuff. And we're going to go back to what we were talking about earlier. The San Diego Comic Con. We started getting some information about the new Star Trek set. We have five figures that dropped, and we're going to try to go through those. We did, and I knew we, we need to briefly mention this, and we'll mention why we're not really talking about them, because I know Calder's super excited about it, but we just don't have enough information. That is um, Eddie Guerrero, WWE Clicks, Eddie Guerrero, and AJ Styles. They have kind of been spoiled. The dials are there. The cards are there. You can read them if you want to, but the thing is, it won't make a lot of sense to you because we don't know what the powers do. Uh, as previously stated, there are new powers in the WWE pack, and yes, we do know what some of them do, and they are on there, like like what, Reversal was on one of them and stuff like yes. that. We know what those do, but there's a couple other powers on there. We do not know what they do. So I was like, eh, probably not talk about it until we know more about it. Is there, is there anything you wanted to talk about in that, Calder? Uh, you know, there's a couple of things. I think they did a really good job on making some of these characters. Just, like, power names-wise, everything is just great. It's beautiful. I really oh, like it. Oh, that was cool. Light, cheat, so, and steal, man. <laughs> yeah, light, cheat, and steal, dude. The house, AJ Styles, Bill, like, all this stuff. They're great power names. Um, I, I really, like, you have no idea how bad I want to go into these guys. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know what, like, half the powers do on their dial. So it'd be a little redundant at this point to try to talk about them. Okay. But they look great. They seriously look great. I, I will definitely give them that they took some time on the flavor text of every single one of the – well, there's only, like, three. But out of the three that we have seen, they've clearly spent time on the the flavor texts 
Uh, and it seems like they're being true to the characters as far as the flavor text goes. So we also saw the, the ring, and I knew you you wanted to say something about the ring. Uh, so the ring is like a super clear like prototype version. There's no paint on it whatsoever, but it's really nice to see that they at least made it a three rope ring instead of the boxing ring, how that has four ropes. Now there's not really like the big turnbuckle pads or anything going on right now. There's no uh, squares or anything like that, so they haven't painted it yet. But so far, they at least have the ropes right, which is nice. Kind of puts my mind at ease that they're not just a straight repaint of the uh, boxing ring. So that's cool. That is good. Christian, is are you a huge WWE fan or no? Uh, so, not really, <laughs> not as much as I used to uh, be. Back when it was still the, like the WWF, you know, yeah, uh, Stone Cold was yes, yeah, St- Stone Cold was huge then. Uh, the Rock, uh, Mankind, all those guys, Big Show. That that was kind of my more my era. But you know, talking about the flavor text, all I can think of is. What is Ric Flair's going to be? Is it just going to be woo for all of his powers? <laughs> <laughs> woo! He dances a like, lot, though. Yeah. So. Uh, I guess we'll see, but, uh, you know, it's interesting because I'm seeing a lot of people online that are like, I'm not interested in WWE at all. Like, I mean, that's cool. I don't know why you're trying to yuck everybody's yum when they're like, there's clearly yeah. people that are really interested in this. There's going to be brand new players. Okay, remember <laughs> that. At your venue, okay? Remember that because of this new property that is coming in, it is going to bring in new people that are like, holy crap, I can fight Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Undertaker in this game? What is this game? So even if you are not a WWE fan, just remember that some people are really big WWE fans, um, and maybe you will have brand new players in in your venue that lasts a long time? What if, what if they start off with WWE and before long they're transitioning over into the Justice League Unlimited set? And they're like, oh, you, I was also a huge 90s kid in the Batman animated series and the Justice League animated series was really cool. So just remember that. It could be a thing. All right, well, speaking of X-Men animated series, we're talking about some of these sculpts we got to see. Yes, sir. Uh, so we have a few new ones. Uh, first up, we have the dragon under the mountain. Smog is making... <laughs> his very first Hero Clips appearance. Uh, this is also um, the very first 2x2 two two, uh, base that we got for Lord of the Rings, so I'm very excited for that. It's weird they put it in an X-Men set, uh, but I'm okay. Okay, so... As long as it's standing on a pile of gold, that's all yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, we, we figured out her name again earlier. What was it, Christian? Evangeline Whedon. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, Our Evang Whedon... Is I think is what it's going to be known as. Yeah, she we looked her up. She doesn't actually have like a code name or anything. She just goes by her regular name. Her literal power is to transform into a dragon. So that's the why sca- we have... big scary red dragon. <laughs> Pretty yeah, awesome. That's, that's why we have a dragon. So okay, moving on. Uh, we have a red onslaught, which is going to be sort of a quick little face swap from the normal onslaughts. We're getting that red skull. It's gotta be a uh, whatever. Yeah, uh, he's not a prime. He's actually just a rare. Uh, there's no green ring around his base, which is nice, and there is printing on his base, so that's pretty what, cool. What if the onslaught is the regular onslaught is the prime? Ooh, people are gonna be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> people probably want that onslaught more than red. I'm probably like one of five people who are excited for a red onslaught. Uh, uh, besides, if, if, if you don't know, those are two different characters. One, the regular onslaught is a mixture of Professor X and Magneto, and then Red Onslaught is the Red Skull transformed into Onslaught. It's really weird. He's mixed with Professor X, so continue. It's, it's pretty great. We also got to see a super rare Sauron sculpt. Uh, we're going to see Cyclops, Jean Grey, and then the Fast Forces, which is going to have the Beast, Gambit, Rogue, Storm, uh, Jubilee, and who's that top character there? Uh, I can't see it in this picture. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, we've already seen the rest of those sculpts down there already. And also, in one picture that was floating off to the side, we got to see a few Star Jammers, including that one guy. Uh, what was his name? It was like Fabian something. It was like a really oh, weird yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, it's Fab- yeah. Yeah, so that guy is going to be remade. He has been remade since, like, Mutations and Monsters. So that's everything on the X-Men side, which is really cool. Star Trek side, we got to see a whole bunch of sculpts of Star Trek characters, I'm sure have names and are really cool. (laughs) You know, there was somebody on the Twitter. I cannot remember who it was now, so I apologize. Uh, Certainly it was one of our listeners that was like, "Uh, so if they made a, a Star Trek set and even I can't tell who they are in the sculpts, they did something wrong, indicating that they're, like, a huge Star Trek fan. So I'm right. like, ooh, okay, all right. 
So there is one thing to take away here is that the, I don't know who this guy is, but the Mirror Dimension Suns Out Guns Out guy, his color tab is a more bronze than the Super Rare tab right next to him, which means the really cool only figures I really wanted from this set, the Suns Out Guns Out, uh, Mirror Dimension Star Trek people are chases, uh, which means I'm probably not going to get any, um, but that's a cool chase theme at least. Okay. Well, we so, did yeah. actually get quite a few of the previews spoiled from that set, so we are going to jump into about five of those. Christian, are there any ones that you wanted to start off with? What do you want to talk about? Uh, I kind of want to start off with Lieutenant Commander Data. He just – the fact is he's a shifting focus, and I don't know if there's ever been a shifting focus that's been a super rare before. Oh, that is a weird uh. Uh, um, there has not been, no. Okay. Uh, so I'll just start with him then. So Lieutenant Commander Data comes in at 50 points with the United Federation of Planets uh, team ability, and that reads, uh, when this character is given a move action, modify speed plus one. So basically the Avengers team ability. Yep. Uh, he's got two traits. Uh, the first is the shifting focus free. If he, you know, began the map, you can replace him with a character with the same name. Uh as long as he's on the same click number and replace him. Uh, second trait is our, adv- oh, one thing uh, to note is that he's dressed like Sherlock Holmes and that <laughs> all of his, all of his flavor text is Sherlock Holmes related. So his second trait, our adversary is none other than the Professor Moriarty himself. When an opposing character within six squares would use outwit, perplex, or probability control, you and that opponent each roll 2d6, and you add Lieutenant Commander Data's deduction tokens. If your result is higher, instead, that opposing character can't use that power this turn, and Lieutenant Commander Data gets a deduction or deduction tokens. That's um, pretty good, though, because it, it's a passive ability, and, he, and then you don't actually ever lose deduction tokens. Yeah. So that's pretty legit. You could just keep going. I mean, if it's possible to never lose a roll after a while. Yeah. So that, that that's pretty awesome in itself. Uh, he does have two special powers, both which are in the first three clicks of his five-click long dial. Uh, the first one is a speed power. It says, come, Watson, the game is afoot. It's just sidestep and stealth. And then his damage power, which is elementary, my dear Jordy, is probability control when Lieutenant Commander Data uses it the result can't be further re-rolled. So either that can really help you or really hurt you, <laughs> depending on how good you, you roll. And in my case, it would probably just hurt me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but his stats are pretty pretty standard. I mean, it's just nine speed, first three, eight, uh, just regular stealth, then naked ten attack all the way through, um, 18 defense, def- um, toughness, and then he goes down to 17 on his last two. Uh, close combat reflexes, and then his damage is just three across the board. Uh, and he does have Indomitable, which is probably one of my favorite uh, powers on a character. So, uh, We have, I, I don't know if you remembered to mention the keywords, but they are... Oh, holo- yeah, I didn't. Holodeck is a keyword? Holodeck. Starfleet <laughs> Detective and Robot. Probably Indom because Robot. Uh, but yeah. Weird that Hollow Deck is a keyword. He is gonna be big on robot teams for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, this is like the cheapest robot probability control on a team right now. This is really good. Really, Not really good. Not only that, but I mean, just the passive ability to maybe cancel out your opponent's outwit, perplex, or probs. Yeah. Okay. That's that's yeah, not that's bad at all. Always awesome. You put them up against X Men, and how often do they use Perplex? Oh my you gosh! Constantly roll. <laughs> oh, that takes that make every turn takes so long. <laughs> All right, well that is Data uh, Calder. Which figure did you want to talk about? I guess I will talk about. I'm not going to try. I'm just going to call him the Borg guy. So we're going to go ahead and talk about Jean Luc Picard, aka Borg version of him. I want to give a shout out to Chris Rizzi for sending in these previews earlier today. 
Uh, thank you so much for getting these to us. He is a super rare. He's silver ring. He is the Borg team ability, which is just Suicide Squad. Because no one knows what that does, this is what it does. When adjacent friendly characters KO'd after resolutions, you may roll a d6. If you do heal this character, equal to the result, minus two, minimum one. So the Borg are kind of supposed to die. He has two traits and then no special powers. I am whatever of the Borg. From this time forward, you will serve us. Friendly characters that are adjacent and have the board or sorry or have the board keyword can use steel energy. If they can already use steel energy, when they use it and heal, they heal an additional click. So that's pretty dope. His second trait is attacking the Enterprise. Friendly characters that are adjacent or have the board keyword modify attack value plus two when attacking only characters with the Starfleet keyword. He is great. In sealed, if you, I guess, ever would play sealed of this set, I don't know. He has a pretty standard dial, though, with running shot, penetrating psychic blast, top dial, with toughness and outwit. He has seven range and indom. He's only 75 points. After those first two clicks, where he has the same power set, he moves on to sidestep and precision strike with ESD and range combat expert. And then on his last two clicks, he goes down steel energy, some regeneration, and uh, two more clicks of outwit. Of course, uh, he only has regen on his very last click. Uh, the one before that has ESD, but fairly vanilla dial with really cool, I uh, would say, traits that kind of help the Borg get around. So I think it's pretty awesome. Giving everyone a plus two attack when attacking Starfleet could be pretty great if you're playing a thematic game, which is like, man, I mean, I want to play a thematic board game, but like, all your guys are going to have plus two attack against me. That kind of sucks, dude. So, you know, if he's a 13 attack running shot pulse wave, that's pretty gnarly. And then if he ever... You know, gets in time, uses steel energy, that'll work. Giving other people steel energy is also pretty awesome, even though he's not meant to be up close in the fight. Uh, he's definitely a leader, kind of commander figure, and I think he's really cool uh, with board, robot, and soldier keywords. Yeah, I, I was just thinking of the most recent set, having, you know, Doctor Strange come out with that soul gem, and you just pay 10 points to throw steel energy on someone, mm. and they're hitting from range for steel energy, and they're just double healing if they're next to this guy. Gross, I hate it. Thanks for the idea. It's going to be pretty Thanks awesome. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we did actually get another Borg, but since there's five and I'm only going to get to talk about one of them, we're going to switch gears a little bit because of the just absurdity of this character. I wanted to talk about because he's awesome. <laughs> Q! I don't know who Crow. this is, but I love him. Because it's basically Napoleon standing in front of a banner with a Florida Lee in front of it. And it's awesome. We have four different point values that you can start this character off at. Uh, descending numerically, we have 300, 225, 125, and 50. Has its own team ability, which is just the letter Q. That's the little symbol. Um, and a boatload of amazing stats, which is insane. Okay, so we have, it looks like 8 range with triple bolts, uh, 12 speed top dial. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the 300 point dial ju alone just because there's, there's a lot to this character. Uh, 12, um, 12 speed with phasing teleport, 12 attack with in cap for that multi bolt that he's got going on, 19 defense top dial with a special defensive power, and 3 printed damage with a special damage power. And I know you're like, oh, 3 printed damage for a 300 point kick. Just relax. Calm down. Hold on. It gets really awesome for no reason. Cosmic. Deity. Past keywords. Real name is Q. <laughs> All right. Oh. Huh. Q. Oh. Two, Q two, going two, on. two traits. Two traits. Uh, the first one, and I might need a little bit of help. This kind of is blurry, so if I mess something up, please correct me, guys. Uh, a game to test if you are worthy of the great greatest gift the Q can offer. At the beginning of the game, generate a number of alien soldier bystanders uh, corresponding to Q's point total. So for 300 points, he gets four of these. Uh, three for 225, two, and then zero if he's on the 50-point line. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do Alien Soldier because most of the rest of it doesn't involve the Alien Soldier. Uh, what they do is they have Autonomous with four range, uh, one bolt, six speed, which is naked, ten attack with Pinsai, 16 defense, which is invulnerable, and three printed damage. They have uh, it, four of these, so if you're playing a 300 point team, you automatically got five characters to start your 300 point team, so that's pretty legit. Uh, they do have a trait. It says, alien soldier can't be given 
And that's when I was like, I cannot read this. Is it an action token if they have one action token? They can't be given an action if they have one action token. All right, so basically you can't push them. But they have autonomous, so that's okay. Uh, so that's the first trait. The second trait is this game shall, in fact, uh, this be, com be, be completely, completely unfair. Thank you. There you go. Right, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> it says straight up Q isn't a standard character. Thank God. Because we don't want <laughs> to be able to, dumb. we don't want to put the Goblin Glider on Q. Uh, or one of these other, probably much better equipment items. That's just the one that came to mind. Uh, so that is, that is the first one. Can't be a character, uh, can't be equipped with it, with anything. Uh, Double Slash says, at the beginning of your turn, if there is no D6 on this card, roll a D6 and place it on this card. So you'll get it right at the beginning of the game. Double Slash. When a character uh, within range rolls an attack roll or rolls for super senses, you may remove the d6 from this card and replace it, uh, replace a die in the roll with it. That's dumb. First, it's just ridiculous. That's, that's really dumb. You guys know what you can do with that. You roll a freaking one or a six on like that. Either way, that's like really, really good for you if you roll a one or a six because it's immediately going to make you make them miss an attack for you it's going to make you hit one of their freaking super senses rolls that's awesome so that is the second trait and then we need to get into the special powers because he's not already dumb enough uh let's, this is let's just do, so dumb i know so here's the special <laughs> defensive power uh to use a 20th century term she's in a penalty box where she will be un unharmed unless so he has Mastermind and Super Senses. And then once per turn, when an opposing character attacks Q, after resolutions you may place a penalty box marker in their square. At the – is it end of their turn? At the end yeah. of their turn? Yeah, yes. Okay, so I, this is the hang-up I had, so I'm going to actually have you guys explain this to me because I didn't understand it. Maybe somebody out there also will not understand it. So at the end of their turn, remove the penalty box marker. Uh, characters occupying a penalty box marker have immobile. Uh, when an attack – and double slash – when an attack targeting Q misses, deal a character occupying a penalty box marker one penetrating damage. So they – they run up, say they have running shot or hypersonic speed, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's a ranged attack. Uh, they miss. They have to miss. And then you put a penalty box marker in their square. Now they have immobile, but it immediately goes away at the end of their own turn. It doesn't stick for next turn. What would be the benefit of that? Uh, no, so they don't have to miss the attack. It's just whenever they attack Q. They get a penalty box marker. So as soon as you go up and try to shoot Q, so you're saying, I'm going to make an attack against him, you instantly get a penalty box marker. And then, of course, after you make the attack, which is when you're targeting him, then you miss it. It's still in your same turn. You have that penalty box marker, and you can take a penetrating damage. Uh, it gives you a mobile for the turn, which basically means you can't be, uh, you can't run away. Like if you If you go up for Q, you're going to be stuck there at least during your own turn. It doesn't do a whole lot on his turn, and I know it's it's like all these interactions that happen right after one another to that trigger, uh, but that's basically how it works. Yeah, the way I can see it is like if somebody were to call in, say, Super Rare Cyclops, he runs up, targets him. Now he can't get poofed off the map unless somebody gets TK'd away. That's the only – so he can't running shot, then sidestep away. Yes. Um, and then it's anybody occupying a penalty box marker, so it doesn't matter who misses him if – it, on the map, if somebody just misses them with an attack, anybody occupying a penalty marker at that point, you can deal one penetrating damage. So it doesn't even have to be the attacking character. So that's dumb. That's pretty dumb. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, if you're not figuring this out yet, uh, Q's a pretty dumb figure. Uh, but, but hold on. But wait. There's <laughs> more. more. There's more. So uh, top dial. Well, actually, okay, so that special defensive power, that's literally the whole dial. The, the dial is 11 clicks long. Now, there are no stop clicks on this dial. That's okay. Uh, he has a special damage power, which is the entire dial as well. And it's, it's kind of weird because the damage goes throughout the dial. It goes 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3. 
Um, but the damage power says that he has probability control and shape change as well. So if you're keeping track, this figure has super senses, shape change, probability control, mastermind, and the ability to uh, make you switch out dice that you roll. So they have to get through this entire bevy of defenses in order to hit Q. And even if you do hit Q, he has mastermind with these stupid little alien soldiers that have invulnerability. So <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> now we're starting to talk. But hold on, there's one last thing that I forgot to mention. What does the Q, uh, what does the Q team ability do? Oh, it's 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 quintessence. It's uh, the power cosmic team ability. It gives him protected yep. outwit, and it's uncopyable. So it, it um, gives you willpower. Willpower, too. yeah, I'm sorry, willpower. So as well. So this is not, this is not a slouch of a character. It's really really dumb, and I think that this would be this is one of those characters where it will be so ungodly annoying to play against for some people, and other people they won't have a problem with it. It depends on like what your loadout was. If you come in swinging with a bunch of precision strike, okay, not too bad. But if you don't have any precision strike on your team at all, or any ability to get it, you have to get through. Shape change, super senses, probability control, another pseudo probability control in a way, and mastermind on one character. <laughs> well, well, what makes it even dumb is him and Tree Lane share a keyword. And Tree Lane basically does the same thing with a D6 roll. And I don't think you can replace a uh, super sense roll, but it's attack rolls. That's so, so cool. Like, <laughs> I don't even know who this character is. The sculpt alone sold me. Well, it's but, you. <laughs> the one. <laughs> but just, this is so stupid. And obviously, the rest of, we have not seen a bunch of Star Trek figures that are anywhere on this kind of power level. So, this is one of those, this is so unfair from what we've seen so far. If you are going to play Sealed, and you luck into pulling Q. Oh, okay. <laughs> you win. You might as well just, like, no one else th stands a chance. Because all the yeah. other characters are, like, 45, 50, 75 points. And Q's 300 by himself, and he's five characters. That's dumb. So, all I can think of is Autonomous with 10 Pensai and 3 damage. Thank goodness, oh, yeah. no moving attack though. So that's they, nice. they had to, they had to huh. like rein him in in at least one way, and that was the only thing that I can see on this that is drastically bad. Because he has 19 defense. That's not like that's super stupid. His attack is 12, 12, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Like, so stupid. <laughs> you know what doesn't get me is that, but it's the random spots of five damage that are on his dial. Like, why? Goodness. I, I really wonder if there is some type of like thing where we're messing with his damage output being three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five, four, three. I like, don't. It, it, if there is anybody out there that actually kind of knows some things about this character. Please let us know. It does list the significant appearance as season one, episode ten of the Next Generation. I'm not gonna go watch that, so maybe someone can like Eternal Sausage it for me. Nice, <laughs> nice. Ah, oh, so sausage. Who wants your sausage? <laughs> All right. Well, that is Q. If you guys don't have anything else to say about Q. Um, Calder, you want to hit us with the next character? Man, I don't know. We already talked about three Star Trek characters. There's only two left, and like, ugh. Ugh. Actually, the gonna... search bar is pretty cool, though. All right. Well, I will go ahead and talk. I'll do this queen lady. All right, uh, so, uh, uh, Borg, the queen, uh, sorry, the one who is many, Yas Queen. So she's the title character. She's 100 points. <laughs> yeah. She, she Yas is, Queen? She's the Borg team ability, whatever. She's green chick, all right? Her dial is pretty standard. She's eight range, one bolt. She's indomitable. She has three damage for her first three clicks, two damage for her next three, three damage on her very last one. She has side step for three clicks, and then on her last four, she has plasticity. Her attack is blank on her first two, and then on the last whatever five, it is steel energy. She is invincible for the first three clicks for dial, then toughness for the next three, and regen on her last click. And like I said, outwit, and then exploit weakness on the damage power. So... What are her title abilities? Let's get right into it. So, when you kill her, 
Um, you know, we're going to save that for last. We're going to save that one for last. We're going to do all the fun stuff first. So her plus one is, isn't this easier? Free, choose one, move, close, or range. Actions of the chosen type given to friendly characters that are adjacent or have the board keyword don't count against your action total this turn. So if you're playing a Borg Swarm, she makes it that much easier. That's so awesome. So, <laughs> so awesome. She has the Borg keyword, and she's friendly. So her move actions also don't count against a year total, if you don't do that, or her attacks, or whatever. So you can just make, you know, a ton of them. At least it's not attack. It's close or range. So that's nice. You know, she's one of the type. Which is cool, helps rein that in. So it's a really good plus one. So she starts with zero. It's a very good thing she starts with zero. We'll get into that in a bit. Can, can Her, we just can we just talk about the fact that if you are of the per, of the mind where you're like, man, I really like the Borg. You just found a staple character on your Borg swarm teams forever because not. she. So, okay, so say you're playing like an 800 point team, right? And there's going to be some lower point cost characters or whatever. So you're going to run like. 15 of these Borg or something, right? She has... Sorry, step on your toes a little bit, but she has Regen on her last click! She's one of the only title characters I've ever thought of of just, like, stick her in your starting area and pop that plus one ability every turn. Who cares about the one damage? When you get to the end and you have Regen, just Regen then! Who cares? You can move all 15 of your characters at one time every turn. This okay. is 100% what you should do. <laughs> no. Well, stick her with that board guy we just talked about, the Lodicus or whatever, because she has steel energy from her third click to her seventh. So what's that? Oh, she hits for steel energy, and she heals two clicks. Also that. So there's really good synergy <laughs> on the board side of things. Starfleet needs to uh, <laughs> up their game here, because the board are just killing them right now. Her first negative, which is negative X. So basically, you're just going to do that plus one a million times, and then whenever you finally... Uh, get to it. It's going to be negative X. It's just transporter. I don't know if you're going to be using this, honestly, but we're going to read it anyway. Free. Choose a character on your sideline with the board keyword and starting line for that character. You may play. You may pay one plot point plus one plot point per ten full points of this character's cost to place that character in the starting line in an unoccupied square within six squares in line of fire. A force may only have one character placed by this effect on the map at a time. Example, you can't play uh, five plot points for a character for a 40 to 49 point character. So you gotta bring in a board from your sideline. This is exactly what we saw with Captain Kirk and the other title character in the last Star Trek set, so that's kind of cool. Here is her dumb one. It's called uh, whatever. I'm not even going to try because I'm too Assimilation. Tired. Sure, that one. Ass. Assimilation. <laughs> <laughs> Free, choose a character from an opponent's KO area. You may pay one plot point plus one plot point per full, per ten, whatever. One plot point per ten points of that character's starting line played this game. So it has to be the one they started the game on. Uh, to place that character on the starting line in an unoccupied square within six squares in line of fire, a force may only have one character placed with this effect on the map at a time. So that means she can bring back your opponent's dead characters. So, know what you're thinking, Calder. Man, that sure is cool, but you can only get so many plot points. What's a good, cheap character I can bring in? Oh, I don't know. Surter, Mangog. <laughs> that means just a few to name. <laughs> Tri-Sentinel. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, basically, what's going to be used oh, for crap. Carnage? Yeah, easy 10 points right there, baby. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, you only bring in one character at a time. It's nice. You can't, like, spend 50 points and bring in all those giant girls or Carnages or whatever you want. That'll it's only three one character, uh, so that's cool. So, uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing here, ladies and gents. We're bringing back uh, your dead Colossal Retaliation, and maybe if you get a little saucy, you can bring back other figures, I suppose, too, but the uh, Retaliation is definitely going to be your number one pick. So this is also a dumb character. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> just saying. Good <laughs> night. Nice. It's good stuff. Yeah, I, honestly, I feel a little bad for... Christian, who has the last character, because it's kind of like womp womp uh, <laughs> yeah. compared, compared to these last ones. But it, it's totally on the board. It's on the board you know side. What? So at least you got. You know that. what? Screw you. I'm going to make this the most fantastic character. All right, Do here it. we go. You won't. Show me how. The, show me the sausage. Show me how it's made. <laughs> Let me show you my sausage. <laughs> Side joke for later. Uh, <laughs> This is the Borg search party, man. When you need somebody found, this is who you need right here. Borg search party. You ready? 40. He only comes in at 45 points for 
definitely the cheapest character we're going to preview tonight. Guess what? He has the Borg team ability. So, you know, he was with three other Borg people, so he'll work right with that team. And you know what? He'll fit on a 300-point team with Borg Queen, Lodicus Borg, and then the Borg Search Party, because this is who you need right here. All right, trick. When Borg Search Party KOs an opposing character, which I don't know how he'll do. We'll get into that. <laughs> Roll a D6. On a 5 through 6, you may generate a 002A Borg drone on click number 4 in that character square. That generated character has autonomous. So he can bring in autonomous characters, and there's not many characters that can do it. So that's what makes him awesome. So right here, he has a special attack. And he has it for his first two clicks. It's Pensai. And then, uh, well, it's called Seeker Programming. Pensai. Free. Choose a friendly character that's adjacent or has the board keyword. This turn, this character modifies their range by plus two and can use improved targeting hindering. Guess what? Other two characters don't have, didn't have improved targeting hindering. But guess who gives it to them? Borg Search Party. That's right. Because now they can modify their range by plus two and can hit from about ten squares away. So, like I said, he's only four squares, or he's four clicks. Uh, starts off with, um, what is that? Um, uh, yellow power. It's, it's, not, it's obviously, it's obviously the matter reconfiguration assembly, duh. Yeah, whatever that is. Phasing teleport, thank you, jeez. <laughs> uh, and it starts off with eight speed, phasing teleport, then drops down the sidestep, um, and then he ends with a naked speed. Uh, he, his last two clicks, he has steel energy. Hmm, what Borg helps with steel energy? Oh, wait, Lotus gets a Borg. <laughs> so he can heal up back the top dial with his nine attack. But <laughs> And then he his uh, defense goes from toughness to ESD to regen, 17, 17, 16, 16. And then he starts with enhancement. Hmm, who can he enhance? Oh, people with range. What else does he do? Hmm, oh, he enhances range and gives them improved targeting. So tell me how this character's not the most awesome support piece for board teams. Thank you very you, much. You know what I just realized? Based off of the wording, uh, and this is totally the same with the Suicide Squad, based off the wording, it just says when a friendly character is KO'd. So if you just want to squander like some points, this is probably not the cheapest Borg in the set, but if it is, you just want to keep popping off that plus one ability again and again and again, right? Um... Just basically push your Borg right next to your Borg Queen and let them kill themselves, and then you don't even have to waste turns regening with her. You can just use the uh, Borg team ability to roll to give her health back from the Borg, and then she can keep popping off the one and ones. That's... You know what he's going to do? He's not going to make attacks. The only thing he's going to do is be the character that dies and heals someone on your team. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. That's what I just said! Is that what you just said? Yes! That's what I just said. To You're the worst go To reiterate. Uh, this, is what, sounds, this is why I'm quitting the podcast. That's no other reason. Idea. <laughs> you said that, Calder. I'm glad you came up with that idea, Calder. <laughs> He's so smart and good looking and cool. Uh, whatever. So anyway, uh, that is Star Trek. I think we're out of uh, previews finally, but... There's some good stuff that's coming out. Hopefully the rest of the set keeps up with that for the people that are out there that actually really like Star Trek, Star Wars, Star Trek, both of them. Maybe just Star Trek for this particular case. For now. Yeah. For now. Until uh, Disney decides to let the reins loose on Star Wars, and then maybe one of these days you can have Star Wars hero clicks because I need a Darth Maul, just saying. Oh, my <laughs> oh, goodness. And Darth Jar Jar. Oh, Jar Jar Jar. No. No. The secret is this, Lord. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true, guys. Okay. The, the evidence is all there. You just got to look for it. You hurt my head. You really hurt my head, guys. This is... Oh. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that. We will move on into uh, a, little, like, a little game we like to call Bad Samaritan. <laughs> All right, if this is the first time that you have tuned in to Dial H for Hero Clicks, this is how Bad Samaritan is played. I have chosen three, and I checked them this week, three modern <laughs> age figures. Uh, you they're sure they're modern age? They are, in fact, modern age. Uh, I, I checked them this week. Um, so 
Uh, I have a list of uh, clues in front of me. Calder has a random number generator. He's going to give me a number. I'm going to give them the associated clue. They are going to take a guess based off of the information that I give them about that character. They're going to get one guess per round and a total of three rounds per character to guess to see if they can figure out what the character is. Uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> they, they are, in fact, modern age, just to reiterate that. Um, but if you guys don't have any questions, Calder, you can go ahead and generate a number for me. All right, sounds good. Number 16. Number 16 is opening damage power, and the damage power is leadership. Nice. So printed leadership on the dial, top dial. That's cool. That's cool to know. That, that, that is correct. I will take this time. If you, if you want to participate, go ahead and uh, after you hear the clue, pause the podcast, see if you can come up with an answer. Uh, press play, see if you're right. And uh, make sure and message Calder on tw on Facebook to let him know, oh, my God, I can't believe you didn't figure it out on the first clue. Make sure you do that. He loves getting those messages. Those are my absolute favorite. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, we always know the uh, the most famous leader of them all is Captain America. You done right. You guys done think... right. <laughs> oh, I should say that there's totally a theme this week. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I got the theme. You know I what, Calder? Like, I, I was like... surprised you got the theme last week. I was. Oh wow! Okay, I had more than the, you know good, good looks under that cowboy hat. You know. Oh, yeah, man. I was just gonna say, not just a hat rack, my friend. Not just a hat rack. <laughs> so there is a theme. Um, I'm not gonna give you anything past that, other than it is something that I came up with. Five minutes before we started recording, so you know I put a lot of thought into it. Nice. Uh, if, if, if after they guess and it is a correct answer, it will sound like this. If it's a wrong answer, it will sound like this. And I may just play other random sound cues in here because I think that they're funny. <laughs> Excuse me while I whip this thing out. <laughs> you know, I think I have my first guess. I'm going to go with Medusa. Medusa. Locked in. It will cover all, right. all characters named Medusa if they uh, are modern. Yeah, I would just be remiss if I didn't say Captain America, so Captain, Captain America. Captain America locked in. America. America. Survey says. <laughs> it's a bowl of big old negativo. We'll move on to clue number two. Number four. Number four is set number. Set number is 21. Ooh, okay. All right. Well, Normal set, what that is, uh, uncommon, right? Uncommon, yes, yes. It's number 21, uncommon, not Medusa, not Captain America. That's a darn shame, Medusa isn't uncommon, too. All right. Well, they are not super rare. Uh, the only gravity feed is for Ragnarok, and I don't even know if it went up to 21, honestly, and Rip, and then Captain Marvel. Those Rip, I'm dead. Uh, so those are the only gravity feeds I believe that are in modern right now. Um, so 21 in the Captain Marvel set might be something like Agent Coulson. Uh, TMNT4. TMNT, ah, yeah, I forgot about those guys. Um, at the very least, we know it's not starter set figures, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what else? What else is there? I want to keep it to main set, though, and just kind of mm -hmm. run off the gun like that. Think of an uncommon with leadership here. Uh, one additional thing that may help you guys out. We did get a response from a listener. I can't remember who it was, but they said, hey, I think it would probably be prudent if you guys don't pick any characters that you have chosen before, as in being used inside of Bad Samaritans. So these are all brand new characters to my knowledge. I don't remember or recall ever using these before, so maybe that will help you out. Mm. So it's not Squirrel and Nord, just saying. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the ones that I'm thinking of right now are all from the Batman set. Uh, they're all the crime bosses. There's Penguin, Roland Daggett. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have printed leadership, or was that part of their trait, I thought? Yeah, I, that's what I'm trying to think of. I know, I'm pretty sure one of them had traded leadership, or not oh. traded. Um, yeah, well, I, 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 keep going. Sorry, now you can go for it. 
Man, if it was Crime Boss. I know all of the Earth X ones, uh, all their crime bosses, their leadership was part of their trait, uh, because yeah. if you succeeded or failed or whatever, you gotta bring in a dude, a flunky. Yeah, and animated series, you got to bring in your suited henchmen. Yep. I think, I think I wanna go with, um, I'm trying to remember who, uh, some people from Secret Wars Battle World, I'm trying to think of the Crystal, I think it's Chris Starr. I think I wanna go with him, maybe his leadership, top, Dial, and he's an uncommon in that set. He's quite a weird character. Might fit some kind of theme, like a gem related theme. <laughs> a gem related theme? Yeah. It's not super out of. Whatever, man. Crystar! <laughs> okay, okay. Is that, so locked in with Crystar or Crystar? Yeah, Crystar, whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Locked in. Uh, what name? Christian? Yeah, so Renee Montoya, does she have enhancement or leadership? That's a great question. You should ask someone who, who played in that set. Um, <sighs> Come on, call I feel like it. Was, I, I feel like it was, I even bought that set too, and I, just, I honestly don't know what any of the figures do. Um, I think it's probably enhancement though. She's cop. Yeah, because I know the uncommon cop who has leadership is I, Commissioner Barbara Gordon, and she is, in, but hers is a special damage power. Yeah, see, I feel like her, like, normal Jim Gordon would have, like, normal... Leash. Yeah, but he's a common. He is? Okay. Mm. Mm, this is mm, yes. Mm, yes. Mm. Very peculiar. I do know that Phil Coulson, I can't remember if he's number 21 in the Captain Marvel set or not. I know he does Definitely have not. Out. Definitely not? All right, cool. Yeah, that, that's Captain Marvel. It's either Captain Marvel or Carol Danvers. No, it's oh, Captain gotcha. Marvel. Gotcha. Ah, screw it, Captain Marvel. Okay, <laughs> locked in for Captain Marvel and Crystar Services. <laughs> we'll move on to clue number three. So it was last totally, clue for this it was, figure. It's totally Crystar. Uh, thirteen. <laughs> thirteen opening movement power. And that's gonna be charge. Charge leadership. How is this not a Crystar dial? What? Ah, oh, come on, he's got a sword and everything. All right. <laughs> who's the flame? Who's the flaming dude? Uh, uh Magmar. I don't know. Um, Lava Man. There's Lava Man and there's Mega Man. I'm trying to remember what the better. Mega Man. Ah, uh, no. Capcom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, his name is. Now I'm trying to think of it because people were like so angry about how his sculpt looked, how terrible the paint was. He had a hammer. I never. I played a million of these battle royales. I must have freaking never played against this guy. I don't know. Um. I'm gonna feel real dumb when I can't get this, but I know I can't get it. Uh, ha ha! Secret Wars, what a fun set. Leader, uh, uh, Luke Cage. Luke Cage. Luke Cage. Is there? Do you think? Do you think it, Luke Cage has a leadership and a charge? Let's wait a second. Yeah. Let's He's wait a second. Right? There's. Oh no. He has a power there. top dial. Are you on the realms? You on the round, you cheat! You cheat! Oh no, hold on, let me look real quick. Quit cheating, Calder! I'm not <laughs> cheating! I know EarthX, dude! EarthX, I know! <laughs> oh, that was a long pause. He's on to me. Close the tabs, delete the browser history! <laughs> Calder, I'm pretty sure you're used to that. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what do you guys got? What are your guesses? <laughs> oh my goodness. Charge leadership on common. Uh, for the best you can guess. Is uh, a Black Panther? No, his was special. Oh my goodness. Mm. I really just want to say this person's name. Come on. Come on. See, it's something, mm. something wacky and he wants to say it already. I don't know what it is. Could be anything, really. Oh man! The only Wild West person is Wonder Woman. Heard some special about leadership. Uh, to be fair, you guys didn't get very good uh, clues. Out of the terrible, I think. Mm. I'm out. Uh... Well, yeah, there's no sense in uh, dilly dallying. We can't think of anything, so just figure out one solid guess. I would say charge leadership. Uh, Superman. Twenty one. Huh? Nah, that's not a bad one. I'm gonna go Superman. Okay, locked in with Superman. Calder. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, Magmar. 
if that's even his real name. I'm just going to... Magmar. That is a back. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Yeah, we'll see. Magmar, sure. Mel... Me, uh, I, I know what you're talking about. Is that from the um... Secret Wars Battle World? Yeah, I know. What you're talking about. I, I'll, I'll I'll give you it if it is it. Survey says. <laughs> ah! Let's see. Let's see. Where, let's. Let, here, here's something. This makes sense. Where are the turtles? Where are the turtles? Come on, guys, get out of here. Where are the turtles? <sighs> Where are they? Number twenty-one from TMNT four. That's General Trash. General, yeah, sure, that guy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Do you have a guess on what the theme could be? Nope, that's not it. We'll move on to clue number or clue number one. Pick <laughs> your number two. Give me a number. Number six. Number six. Named keyword. I should probably click on the character. Named keyword is shield. Oh, nice. It's done with shield keyword. That's awesome. Okay, and actually it does really kind of cut it down. Um, shield. I wish I knew anything about Lord Shrag, because uh, then I could understand what the theme was, but I have no idea who he is or what he looks like is my problem. Hmm. Shield. All right, well, there's pretty good shield figures in uh, the world. Nick Fury, cover kind of quite a few. Coulson, Nick Fury. Nick, Captain Nick, Nick Fury... Uh, is are you talking about Agents of Fury? No, uh, Nick Fury and Agents of Shield, because that set is rotated out. I'm just, I mean, there is Nick Fury in Captain Marvel. There is yeah. Nick Fury in whatever a Avengers Infinity. That's two yeah. Nick Furies. Yeah. Um. Well, I felt like he was just in a different set too. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Let's see. Let's see. Well, I'm just gonna go with Main Man Coulson. Let's lock him in. Okay, lock yeah. in with Coulson. Uh, what about you, Christian? Um, Everett K. Ross. He has shield, right? Yes, he does. I'll go Everett nope. K. Ross. I assume so. He, he, he sure might might not. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say yes, he does so loud. I'm, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people to hear me when I'm wrong. All right. Locked in with Everett K. Ross. Survey says... Hey! What? Just kidding. Just kidding. It's a wrong answer. <laughs> what? No. no that, is, that is not allowed. That is not allowed. I just wanted to crush your dreams. <laughs> That's actually not the right answer. That... <laughs> You're such a jerk. You know, what? you know what? I'm glad you're leaving this show now, man. Oh, yeah. me. Forget every nice thing I said to you. Oh. <laughs> All right. So it is not Everett K. Ross. It is not whatever Calder said. So we'll move on. It's a union. <laughs> Clue number eight, by the way. Clue number eight, improved movement or targeting, and this character has none. Ah, great. Wow, how neat is that? That's pretty neat. Um, That's pretty neat. It's actually not Nick Fury that we know of now, because both I think both Nick Furies and Captain Marvel had some form of improved targeting. And uh, the space Nick Fury ignored hindering terrain. I'm like 90% sure, so that's kind of cool. Shield. Yeah. With a theme of being next Bel book. Believe it or not, there's actually quite a few S.H.I.E.L.D. characters in uh, that it's modern right now. I didn't even know that until I clicked on the keyword. <laughs> Great. Right on. See, I know Captain America's got S.H.I.E.L.D. Quite a few Captain America's have S.H.I.E.L.D. I just don't know if that would work in this one. Say, whoever Lord or General or Captain or whatever Trag it was... But if I knew anything about him, this could honestly help me uh, with the theme, but I just don't. It kind of sucks. You know what? No, hold on. General Trag? Yeah, sure. Is he a rock monster? I know there are rock monsters in that set. It... So, okay, General, the, the thing I can think of right now, a possible theme, is like General, Captain, Lieutenant, Commander, Admiral. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. Even I'll go Captain America. Yeah, and I'll I'll say Captain Marvel. Right on. Okay, locked in with Captain America, which by the way there are three I did check that are modern, uh, and then Captain Marvel in there I probably about the same. Uh, survey says it is in fact Captain Marvel. 
Yes! Well, I honestly thought he did it again. I was gonna punch it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was waiting for the. <laughs> no, no, you guys got that one right. Okay, so it's it's one and one, me and Christian, and then Callers and Dead last as usual. Uh, so uh, as the one that, usual. The, the one <laughs> the one that I did choose uh, because there are multiple Captain Marvels that are going to be uh, modern right now is zero twenty one from the Captain Marvel set. Um, I. Maybe I narrowed it down too much. With she, wait, she doesn't have her... Oh, she has it on her team ability. Mm, yep, 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 yep. Okay, so we will move on to figure number three. Uh, Calder, give me a clue. All right. We got number 20. Number 20 is a free play. You guys get a guess. Uh, what do you want to know? You want to let me add that set. Yeah, let me add that set. I'm banning that as an option. Next can I tell you something? I can, I can guarantee it's either Star Trek or like Elseworlds. That's my guess right now. Give us a set, Chris. Okay, well, you're wrong on both accounts. Well, it's actually Rebirth. <laughs> it is Rebirth. Rebirth. Okay. Now I'm trying to think of characters yeah. in that set. Um, Commander Steel. That's a Damn it, that's probably it, too. Darn it. Is that, is that your locked-in answer? Oh, yeah, that's dude. That's a really Commander good one. Steel. That's a really, really good one. I want to figure out one equally as good that goes to the theme, but I really think that's it. That's really Lieutenant? Good. No, there wasn't. Lieutenant. <laughs> there's, no, the... there's, like, Dr. Poison, hmm? you know? Oh. <laughs> general, it's General there's, Poison. There's, there's, it's, it's Colonel. You guys are getting oh, it. It's Colonel. <laughs> I'm going Colonel Poison! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> 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 I've already done Colonel Poison. I told you I wouldn't do I'm anything. That's fine. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> You're so excited. As long as you don't play with our emotions, like. <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta think now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. 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 <sighs> what do you want, Calder? I, I, I will tell you, it is not Colonel Point. <laughs> Although, once again, it is still an amazing Euro click. I'm just putting it out there. Really good. Someone go play it. Tell me how awesome it is. It was actually going to be on a team that I was building until I realized that uh, uh, Ant Man can only shrink down standard characters and not, you know, Surters. Hi, you know, I'm just going to go with Citizen Steel. Because you know what? That's still a rank. A low one, but a rank. <laughs> Citizen is not a rank. It's a rank in will... my heart! <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a, it's a rank on our podcast. You could be You're a citizen. Darn... Okay, all right. Locked in for Commander Steel and Citizen Steel. We've got all of the steels, almost, except for Steel. Survey says... <laughs> It is Commander Steel, and it makes yes! Christian Bogan, super fan Christian Bogan, the winner of this week's Bad Samaritan. Yes! <laughs> oh, God. You know, I'm going to say genuinely good job, guys. On You figured out the theme real quick. It was all Christian. Dude. So I... I, I I originally started off with just a soldier theme team. I was like, that makes the most amount of sense. I leave in two days. Soldier, here we go. And then I realized that there's actually quite a few people with uh, ranks in, in their name. I was like, yeah, we can do this. We can do this. So there you go. Um, that was a pretty quick one on that one, guys. It's all, because, it really was. all because of Christian. Nailing the theme real early on. Man, you're good at themes. It was you that came up with the theme last week. Yeah, but I figured it out. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> Dude, when you said Captain Britain, I was like, oh, no. I was trying to get his, you know, Chris's sweet. Uh, <sighs> all right. Well, I, I concede you win. You are clearly better at Bad Samaritan than I am Christian Bogan. Uh, we are going to move on in the podcast. I'm not even going to shill for uh, our Patreon this week because we're just we're, t we're having too much fun to be Debbie Downer. So we are going to jump into the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Every week on Facebook and on Twitter, we put a Community Tuesdays question up for you guys to jump on and to answer. And because Calder is so amazing at making memes, 
That, that was yours, right? The meme that you made? Oh, dude, all me, baby. Time? All me. Yeah, boy. So, uh, if you didn't get a chance to see this meme because you're lame, uh, it is a me and the bo- It's not a me and the boys meme. It's actually it's a before and after meme that have been sweeping through the meme world. Which, by the way, I just want to point out, I think I said this before. I'm going to reiterate. I don't think that Reddit quite under – like, not everybody on the Reddit quite understands meme – like, the meme culture. Because some people are like, I don't get it. I'm like, guys, it's intentionally supposed to be stupid. That's what memes are. Don't mm-hmm. overthink this. Okay, so we got before and after the Area 51 raid, which is a, it's another – this is like multiple memes inside of memes. We're meta-memeing right now. Uh, we got We got Spider-Man, Captain America – and Hulk on the left side of the line and on the right side, we have upgraded versions of all of them uh, after they've stormed Area 51. And that falls in line with our Community Tuesdays question this week, which is, what is your favorite Heroclix upgrade that you've made that replaced one of your go-to versions uh, of one of your clicks with a new go-to version? They got upgraded, okay? So, Calder, what piece did you replace forevermore with a newer figure. So a lot of people like stole my answer. Um, so I'm going to try to do at least two here, but it was Captain America. Uh, for the longest time, I had the Avengers uh, Classics Captain America, the starter set one. I thought he was a really solid, uh, modern-ish, good comic book look Captain America, round shield. I thought he worked really well. The majority of the Captain America stuff I read is not cap with the actual Avengers. I mostly read his solo books. And so I like the Captain America who can pretty much handle his own in any situation. And the new Black Panther Captain America just fits the bill for, like, how I see Cap, how I think Cap should play and everything. And I just, I think that is just absolutely like, perfect. Running shot, sidestep, whatever. Playing without the time gem for more comic accuracy. Playing with the time gem to be an overall just better figure. And I think we have a really just decent Captain America. For, for another one, uh, just because everybody kind of said that, I am going to actually go with the new uh, Mark Miller run Daredevil, who replaced my Deadpool um, Daredevil, the Ally of Heroes one, like 108 point. You can choose Enhancement or Empower, which is really cool, and you can count uh, as a theme team for anyone, which is really cool. And I always like that Daredevil, but the black suit uh, feels cool and Netflixy, and it's a really solid uh, Daredevil dial as well, which I really enjoy. So that one actually kind of replaced Daredevil for me, even if he's not his classic uh, red suit. Okay. Agreed. Well, uh, I think actually super fan Christian Bogan and I have the same answer for this if I'm basing it off of what you put on the Twitters. Oh, well, so take I, it away. Well, yeah, sure. Um, first, I have to ask, um, in all the Area 51 memes, uh, they have clap them cheeks. Like, I don't understand. Clap, we're not going to clap them. All you okay. need to know is if you Naruto run, you can run faster than bullets. That's, that's all that's you need actual, to know. Okay, dude. Yeah. This is a that's, that's scientific fact. Okay? September 20th. I'll see you guys there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So, no. Right. Um, it, it, it actually isn't. I kind of changed my answer, so forgive me. Uh if we go back to the Uncanny X-Men, uh, the uh, uh, 053B uh, Phoenix, uh, just how awesome she was, you know, just all the way through her dial, she just got more powerful. Uh, but then they recently released the uh, BC 1 million Phoenix that is, uh, wait. You are such a dude. <laughs> It's the one they didn't make! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, no, all right. But in all seriousness. So, uh, Age of Ultron, Thor, was actually the one that I'm, I'm, I had put down originally. Um, he was just, he was just a beat stick, you know, really felt really Thorsy, you know, start off rain, at range, you know, being able to hypersonic in or whatever. And, um, but the, the most recent rendition of him in the Mighty Thor, Thor, Thor Odinson, the title character, that is Thor. <laughs> I mean, hands down, uh, great stats across the board, just super, super fast across the board, and the his, just his plot abilities to pull as guardians in the air and make multiple attacks. I mean, all of it is just fantastic, and it just feels a lot like Thor. 
I 100% agree. That was my answer. And not only that, but you can run an actual Avengers theme team and still trigger that ripping Avenger or Asgardians across the field because there's multiple characters that actually double up on those keywords. They have both the Avengers and the Asgardian keyword. You've got uh, the, my favorite one is definitely Jane Foster. Uh, she's oh, yeah. like fantastically amazing. But then also in the Mighty Thor set. You have, I think it's uh, it's like Eric Masterson has no, he just has Avengers. Hold on, there there were definitely a couple of them. Is it Thunder? Thunderstrike. Uh, Thunderstrike. Yeah, yeah definitely do, Thunderstrike. Um, and then in the uh, the not the what is that called? The Fast Forces. You, you had Captain America yep. that you could do. You had um, Hercules that you could do. There's yeah. also all, all, oh, not, not Hercules. Um, uh, is it Iron Man and Hulk? Maybe no, just Iron Man. Uh, I think yeah, Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, so you have options. That's the thing that you can continue running your Avengers theme team and still manage to trigger that. So oh, it doesn't. doesn't feel like a waste. But the the right answer is Jane Foster <laughs> <laughs> because she's amazing. So mm -hmm. that would that would always be my go to. But um that that but just to be a little bit different. So uh, there's another character that I had for this since you stole mine and also. <laughs> Because you made the joke about the, the uh, Phoenix BC because you're the worst person ever. Uh, that's going to be Moon, Moon Knight, the one from the uh, OP kit. And that was because the one that I need my I need my Moon Knight to have the Avengers keyword. And the one that's actually Mr. Knight with him like up on the ledge and stuff, it does not. And I wanted that one to have it, but it didn't make sense with the storyline because he wasn't really part of the Avengers at that point. Um, so the OP kit overrode for me or was an upgrade for the uh, Spider-Man set one where he like has a, um, a bow staff in his hand and he's swinging that rare. So that was like hands down like so much better. And he's like 40 points or something cheaper. I was like, this is so much better. And then uh, on a shout out to Falcon, the Prime Falcon that replaces oh, yeah. the yeah, the, uh, the old seventy five point Falcon, and is better than that one in every way. So I'm like, yep, yep, this is this is okay. But that's enough about us. Let's jump over to the Facebook Calder. Absolutely. Um, so I'm pretty much going to go over every uh, comment that wasn't like an actual like answer to the question. I had a lot of them saying like, haha, very funny meme. Or like, ah, I live for this, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to read the ones that are actually have yeah, to the question. Uh, David J. Gaffney said, uh, once again, that's actually not it. I'm sorry, David. Uh, but he does say good luck to Chris, uh, which is cool. Um, but David Herbert, oh. here we go. Now, oh, yeah, yeah. By, by the way, I did read that comment from Facebook. Uh, I do get on there from time to time just to read stuff on, on our own web page, even though I don't actually have a Facebook. Um, thank you. By the way, there, I think if you try to add me on Facebook, and I don't accept your friend request, that's because I haven't used my Facebook since, like, 2011. So I, it's nothing against you guys. But thank you very much for your wonderful compliment. That really warmed my heart. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. So Dave Herberger said, first off, it's going to be hard to get an upgrade from Chris. Oh, my goodness. This is Chris Long. <laughs> oh, jeez, it's killing me. Uh, he said, I have quite a few upgraded figures. My favorite is the Metal Men. The Crisis versions were fun, but over-costed, and a few were duos. Who likes playing duos? I mean, I used to until I found out they don't work the way I wanted them to. Uh, World's Finest made them a cohesive force at simple point values. Add in with alloy synergy. What a tremendous upgrade. So, legitimately, and I, I actually at one point said this on Reddit, and I got downvoted into, like, Oblivion because whatever. Um, the rules for merge and split and duo and stuff like that, and we talked about this on, like, last episode or two episodes ago, are so bad. I think at people's local venues, if you could convince your judge to just rule them so they're a little bit different, then you might actually get some play out of your older characters. And I'm like, I made the comment, like, well, WizKids changes their rules all the freaking time. Everyone should be able to change their rules, kind of, if it makes sense for the game. But those are not the rules of the game. Well, yeah, give it a year, but it'll be like the rules of the game or something. You know, because everything changes in this game anyway. So, whatever. Might help you guys out with duo and duos in the future. The first answer that I have from the Twitters is going to be from Citizen Jedi Legend. And he, he's totally in agreement with you. Uh... Calder, that the Black Panther, I finally found my new go-to cap uh, in 043. Uh, right look, good comic accurate power spread with bonus gem, and so my my faithful Steve from Chaos War number 203. Dude, 
Harkening wow. back. I can't wow. believe you choose that one. But okay. Uh, he can retire finally. Thank you for your years of service. Right on. Two of three, Captain Mark. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to look it up after this. Eric Sexton said, long time listener, first time caller. I thought Thank I was you, going, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I thought I was going to miss Overdrive like Cyclops, Miss Jean, but I found my Emma Frost with Voyager. Welcome to the Army. If you ever make it to Fort, uh, sorry, Fort Sill, hit me up. We can close it up. Thank you, Eric uh, Sexton. But yeah, no, Voyager is a great replacement for Overdrive. <laughs> I will absolutely do that. Who knows where I will end up after Fort Benning, but I will definitely get a hold of you if I'm in the area. Um, I love how Overdrive actually changed into a completely different character after his upgrade, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to jump over to Citizen Loyal Miller on Twitter. He said, my first Doctor Strange was shifting Focus Strange from ADW, and I have switched it to my, my new go-to being the uh, Black Panther Doctor Strange. He is so much better. He's so good with that gym. Uh, don't play him without the gym, but seriously, he's so good. And Todd Butcher said, once again, first off, Chris, good luck, and thank you for your service. My dad and brother are both you. Army vets. We salute you. As for Click's upgrade, mine came in the form of shifting focus, Captain America, who replaced the Age of Ultron cap on my Invaders teams. I play that keyword a lot, and it's surprising to see how many caps will be released without it. I also need some more figure upgrades for it, please, kids. I know you're listening. Uh, the rest of the invaders are definitely due for upgrades, though, uh, which we hopefully get in the uh, upcoming Captain America and the Avengers set. Oh, man. The invaders is such a cool keyword. <sighs> Under Underused in the comics, too, honestly. Oh, for sure. Uh, and they've changed rosters quite a few times because they keep, like, kind of trying to bring them back into the comics, but it doesn't really go over that well. Most of the so time when they try to bring them back, they're pretty bad storylines. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really, really want to like Union Jack. I do. Uh, but they never write him that well. Um, so it's hard to like a character that they don't write very well. I like his grandson, or whoever that is, that takes up the Union Jack afterwards. He's actually a pretty interesting character. There were a few Captain America books uh, that he was in, and I actually liked him a lot. Okay. Uh, is it my turn or your turn? Yes, you go. Uh, oh, man, I definitely should not have clicked out of the Community Tuesdays question by accident. Because it sucked. That's okay. Super fan, the ruffian, Little Plastic Superhero said, uh, Thank you, Chris, for the entertainment the past few years. Wishing you and your family the best as you begin your military career. Hopefully you'll have time to return to the podcast in the future. We shall see. Uh, to answer this week's question, Rebirth Black Adam. Uh... WW3 Black Adam is now retired for me. What is WW3? Is it? I don't know what that is. Is that a set? W that a w. Do you not know? I don't. I don't remember. But I mean, there aren't that many Black Adams, so the newest one is definitely probably going to be. I mean, Power Creep is a real thing in this game. So uh, because they hadn't made a Black Adam in a minute, I'm suspecting that this is definitely an upgrade for sure. <laughs> that Black Damn. Adam is a lot of fun to play. Oh, no, he's dumb. I hate playing against him. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky enough to pull one, so I enjoy uh, it. Lucky son of a gun. Peter Marshfield said, for upgrades, I have made my go-to figure. It's going to be Taskmaster. Uh, used to be Civil War version that he put Proteus on. Uh, makes him about 120. Now I really like the new Taskmaster from API, and I put the Exo Specs on him, which makes him uh, eight points less than the other ones. So he's like a Taskmaster with some cheesy upgrades here. Because, you know, Taskmaster can already pick a million powers and needs exo specs. I like the way you think, Peter Marshfield. Uh, uh, Citizen Peter Marshfield. Citizen but Peter Marshfield. I, I, I will definitely say that is actually thematic with Taskmaster as a character. He collects a lot of gadgets, and he definitely steals them from other people because his power set is to steal people's moves, so he takes their weapons as well to use with their moves because it's efficient. So, yeah, I can, I can totally see him using the exo specs. Uh, back to the Twitter. We have, um, which actually got a really nice message from uh, Ben Jones, our man in uh, Australia, one of the men in Australia, and he's a protagonist. And he said, the Wolverine from AVX was my go-to at 125 points. I can't believe that, to be completely honest. I don't know why anyone would have chosen that one. Like, was it because he had the Avengers keyword? Because not many of them have Avengers keywords. Because the one that came out at, like, I don't think it was too much longer after that was the uh, Days of Future Past one. And that is, like, hands down better in, like, every way 
than that one. But his upgrade was the super rare Headmaster Wolverine. An amazing piece at either point. Every Wolverine before the Headmaster Wolverine is a worse Wolverine. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, it really is. Now, this new Wolverine is pretty good, survivability-wise, uh, if he is on a Jean Grey theme team. Oh, so. my goodness. He So, um, Citizen Loyal Miller and I played a game over the weekend, and that Wolverine was on... Well, actually, he had both Super Rare Wolverine from XX, or X-Men Xavier School, and, um, and then that new one... Oh, they were so hard to kill. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I had to pour so many attacks to just to kill them, and it was just that little stop clicks, man. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have read numerous places online that that particular Wolverine is actually, like, kind of unbalanced for this set. Like, people are having way too hard of a time killing him for the set. For this set? Oh, yeah. He sucks. He's terrible. He's absolutely garbage. I hate it. Yeah, you get to. Well, hopefully, you guys out there pull one in your sealed, and then you can keep using that Wolverine. They, dude, I know they are though. That's what sucks. I hope there's no more Wolverines in that stupid box that we keep one from. <laughs> All right, uh, Superfan Eric Caves. Having only played since Uncanny X Men and TMNT, I don't have a lot of room for upgrades. The Rebirth Batman is great, but so is the animated series one. Even though the armored BVS, even though he likes the armored BVS figure personally. Uh, I've noticed that my go-to support figure switched from the Rat King to the uncommon Alex Wilder. Mind control got steadily worse, mostly through rules changing, but also affected the overall nature of the game that I've been able to notice made it less useful. So he came down to just stealthy, uh, while also evasive, perplexing PC Alex Wilder fills a similar role for way cheaper. Also, I think everyone's choice for Gotham City Underworld, Taxi, has permanently become Kite Man, hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> hell yeah! Okay, all right. <laughs> I was wrapped up in Kite Man. I was just thinking that glorious emerald man flying across the sky. Truly just, beautiful. Just Hand, beautiful. Handing out kites to everyone. <laughs> you get a kite. You get a kite. Well, let's steal some stuff. You get a kite. All right. Uh, Vig Vigilante Collectible said the Avengers Ares got a nice upgrade from the Superior Foes of uh, Superior Foes of Spider-Man version with a clicks with the Superior Foes of Spider-Man version with a clicks FX marker. What's that? Because I think WizKids forgot what it was, too. Wasn't there, like, one Ooh. set? Two <laughs> sets. Come on. There's like, there's, like, two, maybe three. But the thing is, uh, to go back to the answer, though, and to go back to Calder and I's, one of our game uh, at Origins with John Carl, so this... The, John Carl, are you a citizen yet? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, legit, no, he's not a citizen, but that's not important. Uh, what is important is never got that Ares to work the way I wanted it to, and then Calder did in every aspect of the game and yes. stomped me oh, with an awesome. Ares. It was stupid. It was stupid. So that is, uh, that's a good answer. All right, the last one on Facebook goes to Tyler Niren saying, Shifting Focus Doctor Strange replaced every other Doctor Strange besides D20 Strange. It just depends on what point value I need. Movie Chase, 021, Captain Marvel, with her god click, is also my go-to Captain Marvel. The god click, though, it's, Ooh, it's, it's actually really good. Okay, that's, that's a good answer, is too. Also, I want to thank uh, Twitter once again, hashtag Twitter Army. Thank you, Christian Bogan, super fan. Oh, uh, yeah. Showing out this week so we can beat Facebook. We like that. We can beat Facebook. Uh, keep that, that uh, competition going. When I leave, we have Eric the Red who said, I replaced the fear itself, Doctor Strange, with the D20 version. And it is so chaotic and not OP that I don't want to upgrade. I know he's expensive, but he's fun. And that is absolutely the reason to use a figure <laughs> is if it's crazy fun. I mean, he likes 150 points, but you're absolutely right. It's chaotic and it's, it's dumb, but at least it's not OP like Faust, which is why everyone hated Faust, because he basically did the same stuff, but he was like half the cost. I don't know. It was, but have you ever, you guys have been in a game where you reset the board with that Dr. Strange? Oh, um, uh, 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 yeah. It's super stupid, but super funny. I've done it a number of times, and I'm like, I don't have to use this, but I'm gonna. <laughs> reset your pieces. Go. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, oh my god, good stuff. We have a uh, super hero. 
Michael Miller, who said, uh, I, I upgraded from TMNT Colossal Group to Avengers Infinity Colossal Group. Same cost, so much better retaliation. It has oh, been yeah. a blast listening to your thoughts over the years, Chris. I hope the military treats you well. And I'll hope for an occasional surprise appearance in the meantime. We shall see, guys. I, I don't know what's what's going to happen. Who knows? But uh, we will go over to Vigilante TM, who our man in Finland, who said, Chase Mohawk Captain Marvel from the movie Gravity Feed is my now go-to version of her. Um, thank you for all you've done in the community over the years. Uh, be smart. Stay safe. Thank you. And make your, prou- your country proud. I will. And um, I know that... Uh, Vigilante TM, who is also a man who has served in his country, country's military. So thank you for your service. Uh, we have Citizen Chris Kurtz. The Mighty Thor brought us the new Wrecking Crew, so it's got to be them. Yeah, those were all actually like, well, uh, were they all good upgrades? Or, like, I remember two of them being, like, really good upgrades. And then the other two I was, like, not especially excited about. Do you guys remember that? Uh, whoever had the Amanium Ball and Chain and the Crowbar, so... Those were like yes, the so I the Wrecker and Thunderball were both really good. Uh, Pile Driver, I don't think it was actually that good. Um, Bulldozer, maybe. It honestly, memory doesn't serve. I know I own all of them, but I haven't played. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I think it was Wrecker that I had had something about. So Wrecker 125, and then the Wrecker from the Invincible Iron Man, which is, I mean, he's another 30 points. But I thought he did, did cooler stuff. I guess his stats are a little out well, that, now because he drops down into the... Uh, he, he helps out the team a lot, I like to think, yeah. this wrecker. Well, that crowbar alone, he he gives he just gives a person, if they can use Invincible or Impervious, just gives them, I think, uh, I think it just might be toughness. It's either invulnerability or toughness, and then he can use exploit. So basically, he can turn off your higher defensive powers, and then it allows everybody to be able to do more damage oh, that against is, that them. That is good, yeah. I forgot about that. But the old one... Who has a really cool, because if you don't know anything about the Wrecker, he's totally like this, like, really gruff, like, he's not very intelligent, but he, t- he would talk like this, like, I got the power first, you know, like, <laughs> like this, re- that's the name of his trait. It gives all of the friendly Wrecking Crew members mo- next to him, modify their attack by plus one. Oh, yeah, so that is cool. That is solid. Um, well, the the only uh, wrecker in my life is Wreck-It Ralph, I'm just saying. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, and we did get, uh, I think, let's see, two people that are first-time callers uh, in the rest of the Twitter answers, and then one from the Big Stabowski. Haven't heard from you in a minute, but glad to have you here. He said, Age of Ultron Hulk was my guy for a long time, but then came the indestructible Hulk from the Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. set, and it was like a 2.0 edition. Yeah, man, I really, really liked the fact that they came out with that particular one because – I'm one of those sticklers for universes, so when I mix my universes, when I go from, like, MCU Hulk with the 616 Avengers, I was like, I didn't feel good about it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm such a gatekeeper for myself. Um, but when they came out with that one, uh, he's amazing. Like, I thought he was so cool, and he was such a c- cool call-in, and he's got those stop clicks that end on, like, f- they stop right when he has, like, 12 attack, flurry, and 5 damage, and oh, you're yeah. like, this is dumb. So yep. dumb. So so that was a really good answer. Is that the okay, one in the, uh, in the armor, the shield armor or whatever? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. The same one that is in the meme that Calder made. Oh, uh, yep. So. Uh, first time caller, DB Woden's spoon. Uh, jumping on the bandwagon here, I've upgraded to the 43 cap from Black Panther uh, from every other cap that I own. I also had a one-set turnaround from Earth X Black Bolt, to the new Black Panther Black Bolt. Yeah. So, Maybe. um, okay, so I, I, don't, I totally get it, and I agree that the Earth X one is probably not as good as the one from Black Panther, but the one from Earth X is so cool. He does stupid stuff, and that's pretty much what I, that game that you and I played against each other, Calder, where I used just the, um, the Inhumans, the Earth X Inhumans. Yes. While while Karnak was the MVP in that with the the, the flurry and the five damage and stuff, you have to admit that that Earth X Black. Oh, he pulled his weight, man. Pulled his weight. He's a good like, job. He, he was good stuff. Uh, and then the last answer that we have from a first time caller says, uh, or his name is uh, M F Steel O One. Said mine would have to be the very same Captain America pictured on the left being upgraded to the rare from the new Black Panther set. Uh, Calder, tell me which Black pa- or which Captain America that is. Uh, the one on the, the left one from your meme. That is yeah, the, the one focus Captain America. That's the common one. Okay. 
so he went from that to the new one from the Black Panther set. Uh, they almost do the same thing, aside from the newer one not having close combat experts. So uh, they've... Man, the Black the, the Black Panther set did a really good job of upgrading old characters. Oh, it did. Uh, mm, we, got, we got new Doc Strange, new Black Panther. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I still like the Age of Ultron Black Panther. Uh, new Cap. New like a bunch of good new stuff. Um, so thank you everybody for all of the answers. It was a really really nice turnout on both Facebook and Twitter. So that was really cool, and I really appreciate that. Uh, we will move on in the podcast, and we have. Uh, Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tip of the week. Help you, I can. <laughs> Take you to your destination, I will. Citizen Jedi Legends says there are four main action types. If the PAC states any of these power, free, close, or range, that is the type of action that is required. If it doesn't, the power slash effect is passive and is already in play. Uh, for example, would be toughness or exploit weakness. Uh, by the way, I saw super fan Christian Bogan. You did respond to this because there, the GIF, and he always does a fantastic job of linking GIFs in the Hero Clicks Tip of the Week, uh, is from is Bruce Almighty, right? Oh, yeah. Where he's like, you, you said uh, you can't hear GIFs. Me, see above GIF. And it's totally like, I've got the power. <laughs> exactly. That song is like playing from the Bruce Almighty uh, movie. Yep. So it's it's good stuff. Uh, Calder, is there anything you want to add to this? I would say there's one more main action type, and that would be move. Um, just saying. It is, though. Uh, uh, yeah, well, okay. I'm, I'm actually. Well, I'm not, <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm just saying, like, it is power-free, close range, and then, you know, move. Um, it, it's not using a lot of powers, because normally it's a power to give a move action and then, you know, close to range action and no cost or something like that. Um, but Correct. there's also move. All right, no, before the colon not. is what it actually is, and then after the colon is going to be what it does. So uh, a great example of that really is sidestep, since it's free, colon, and then you get a move. So as, a, like, a newer player, you're like, this is a move action. It's really not. Like, it's a free action first because it says that it's free, and you just get a move. And there's multiple other things that are like that. So just remember, pay attention to what's before the colon. That is the action type. And then well, everything after that is what it does. So, okay. Uh, Christian, do you, do, you, do you have anything to um actually about that? Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to be calder over there. Hey, I, oh, that, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. No one wants to be called. <laughs> Uh, all right, but well, we do actually have um, a Malcolm Rush question block, so we can do that. Questions from Malcolm Rush, the manager, Pam, along with his uh, Domino's Japanese pizza menu, which is really cool since we were talking about toppings last week. We got squid on their pizza. I think I'd still order pepperoni. Uh, no. That's awesome. Yeah. You can order squid on a yeah, pizza? Yeah, it's, pretty, it's uh, pretty crazy. I have- oh, hold on. Before you go too far, before you go too far, we need to know. Super fan Christian Bogan, what are your opinions on ranch dressing? Okay. Well, first, I have to ask you a question, and then I will give you my opinion. Fair? Okay. Fair. Very good. Have, sure. you, have you ever had a southern, sweet southern Memphis-type pizza? So it's called. It's got barbecue sauce, pineapple, chicken, bacon, and onion. Okay, so short answer, no. no. But while I was in uh, Nashville, we did order a pizza that had a – jalapeno glaze as the sauce it was kind of like a barbecue sauce okay. and then it had chicken on top of that and then it was supposed to have onions but i don't like onions so oh. uh, kind of the same all right well it's just it's my favorite type of pizza so but okay okay how do you feel on, about ranch uh, opinions on ranch it depends so I, I don't drink it in my coffee like some people <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting <laughs> but um I, I mean, I, I do enjoy it. I don't like it on salad, though. Like, I'll eat it if I'm, like, at Hacienda or something. I'll eat it with my chips. Um, every once in a while, I dip it with my French fries. But I'm more of a barbecue sauce kind of guy. 
Uh, All right. So good man. Good man. Barbecue sauce over ranch dressing. Unlike Calder, who... Wrong. You, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll put barbecue <laughs> sauce in my coffee, though. <laughs> Would you really? Would you do it? I don't drink coffee, so... Oh, what? I might I might try it yeah. just because. I'll try anything once, guys. It's be weird, but I, I'd try. Okay, what are the questions from our man in Japan? All right, so these are questions that are uh, just personal questions. They have nothing to do with hero clicks. Uh, but they kind of sort of do. But let's just jump right into it. There are six, and this is number one. What other hobbies do you like besides hero clicks? Christian, you start off. Um, hobbies. Does spanking children count as one? <laughs> oh, I was high five you right now. <laughs> Tammy was out there going, oh, I can't wait to slap my little one. I'm just kidding. No. Too nice to do. <laughs> Oh, uh, man, hobbies, I, probably just playing video games. That's that's probably my main go-to. Okay, what's your what's the very last video game that you played? Uh, like, uh, console-wise? Yes. Red Dead Redemption 2. All right. Calder, what do, what do you do for uh, fun? I just thought it'd be Other than be super sexy. Uh, that's, just, yeah. that's, a, that's a job. It's a full-time job, actually. <laughs> full-time job. Oh, Flex Metallo. Hobby. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's got to be cosplay. Yeah. That's definitely the hobby I spend a lot of time on. I really enjoy making and building stuff, so it's hundred percent it's cosplay. Calder is the hero of the ranch. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for fun, I like to read a lot, and then I just mostly listen to other podcasts, things that expand my mind, since I don't really listen to music. Next question. All right, so this is a great one. What animals do you like, and do you want uh, what animal as a pet? Do you have any pets? Do you, do you have any pet? pets besides kids? Uh, <laughs> uh, Christian, <laughs> what do you got? Man, I, like, the correlation is uncanny between kids and pets. Um, they just make messes, and that's pretty much what they do. <laughs> and then you have to spank them for making a mess, and then it's sure. cleaning up the mess after them because they can't pick it up themselves. Uh, no, um, so I love dogs. Dogs are, um, probably one of my favorite animals, but I'd say my top animal is a turtle. Like, I know that sounds weird, but I would love to have a pet turtle. It doesn't have to be a gigantic tortoise, but, uh, okay. Tortoise, because it's, you know, an amphibian li lives on both lands. Okay. Was that, was that a setup for this? I like turtles. Was that what that was? <laughs> well, no, I, I love that one. Or if you want to, where are the turtles? Oh, I already did that one. Yeah, I did. But yeah, yeah no, I don't want to play it again. Like, but yeah, I got you. Yeah, aside from dogs and, and turtles, was was a, my top two. Okay, Calder, what about you? Uh, animals exist to be eaten or ridden. Uh, I don't <laughs> like animals that don't truly serve a purpose. Companionship is not a purpose. I like people more than animals. Um, animals exist to be food and to help me move my food around. Uh, it's a rancher point of view. Uh, I've been threatened that someone's going to buy me a dog. Please do not do that. It will die. If you buy me a dog, I will forget. Oh, don't, don't that. Say is a that. fact. I, I will not spend money on something else's right. food. I will spend money on my food, and it will eat the leftovers. Uh, I'm not a pet guy. That one never buy him a dog. Yeah, but if, if someone got me, like, a really sick, like, attack bird thing, Maybe, maybe I would have that. <laughs> like a falcon. Like yeah. That would be sweet. Yeah. That, that would you can, be like, take off the little hood on its eyes, and you just, like, get it. And it yeah. just, like, comes swooping in, like, ah! And like, oh, that would be awesome. Oh That's probably not the sound that falcons are no. not important. Um, my favorite animal, believe it or not, and this is not a setup, is the penguin. It is a penguin, Stop. actually. I really like emperor, emperor penguins. Um, <laughs> my favorite animal. I don't know why. It used to be dolphins for some reason, and then it switched. Uh, I, I totally got to touch a penguin one time. was not supposed <laughs> to touch a penguin. I totally got to touch the penguin because I reached my hand over in the zoo and like was petting this penguin. Remarkably thin. Remarkably thin compared to what you think they are because like, their, their feathers like are so... It's such a thick layer of feathers that you push down on it, and you're like, where's the actual body? And yeah. Like, oh, there it is. So I didn't hurt the penguin, by the way, out there. Good. They're just um, made for insulation. That's what their feathers are aiming for. Yeah, 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 true story. So um, that is <laughs> – I don't think I would want a penguin as a pet. I did have a pet skunk one time for a few months. It was even uh, – it had the the gland removed, so wow. it didn't <laughs> spray, uh, but – it always smells a little bit like the smell oh, of skunk, uh, which I think, uh, which which I think, 
And not not much. It doesn't like rub off on all your like clothes or your bed or anything. Um, but it it does kind. It did kind of make me like the smell of a skunk. So like if I'm driving through the country and you smell the smell of a skunk, I'm like, oh, all right. I named uh, it was named Kodak by the way. Oh, you couldn't have. Uh, was it Pierre from Looney Tunes? No, no, I mean, Kodak. Yeah. You know, I was like, I was like, oh, Kodak. So. What is Pepe Federer? Pepe, Pepe Le Pew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Number three, what games do you enjoy besides Hero Clicks? Uh, Christian, do you have one? I said video games. Uh, uh, no. What is your all time favorite video game? Then? No, we. Oh gosh, um, Final Fantasy VII. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, but no card games. I played those. We played poker almost weekly um, with my in-laws, uh, and you know all other forms of like. Euchre and um, uh, we call it up and down the river. Just any variation of card games is something we do a lot as a family. Okay, call it. Uh, so uh, for another miniatures game, it would have to be Hero Skate. It is a dead version. It's very very similar to Hero Clicks, uh, but I did play it at a convention one time for pretty much the entire. Like it was like a solid ten hours of Hero Skate. With people that kind of half knew the rules, and it was like the most fun I've ever had, like at a convention playing board games. Uh, favorite version of a card game besides poker would have to be uh, BS. Uh, it's awesome. It's great fun. <laughs> uh, so legitimately, Hero Escape is a good game, though. It is. It, um, it's very, very simple when you compare it to Hero Clicks, and I'm really sad that it is dead because I really thought it was such a well-made game. And you can build the map. Yeah, that's you like the it best up. part. Like there are so many 3D little hexagonal tiles, and you can make the configurations. And that that was kind of the fun of the game, where you sat down and you have an opponent, but first you have to build the map, and you're like. Man, this is cool. So if you wanted to make it competitive, you could just take turns or whatever. But really what we just did was just like, all right, you got all these pieces, go. And you start putting them all over the thing to make – it's a brand new map every single time. You'll never have the same game unless you just don't touch the map. Really cool game. Really sad it died. Did you know that there was Marvel? Here yes, here? those are the first ones I ever had. And then I started to branch out into other ones. No, I freaking I love Hero Escape. Yeah, it was so cool. Unfortunately, it died. Uh, but let's see. I if I if I play any other games, I I have played many other games in the past, like Yu-Gi-Oh when I was like 14, Magic the Gathering. Um, M Magic is okay, but I have to. I play with people that I want to play with rather than play the game to play the game. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I do not like sitting down with people that I don't really know to play Magic because it almost is never fun because a lot of the time. The people take it way too seriously, and I'm not about that life. So uh, that's probably collectible stuff. In the video game era that I or uh, arena that I like to do is going to be like I, I'm personally a Bethesda fanboy. I really do like the Fallout games. Um, I really do like the uh, the Elder Scroll Elder Scrolls games as well. Oh, yeah. And then I'm a huge fan of Bioshock. I loved all three of them. Ah, uh, that I game. Know, like, a lot of people actually like really hated the second one and stuff, but I was like, man, I just I just love this world. It was it was such a cool, interesting world where it was like kind of like back in time, but not really back in time. It was, it was such a good good franchise. Oh, uh, total agreement yeah. on Bioshock, man. Right on. That was oh so good. Oh. Next question. I didn't do video games. I'm just gonna shout out really quick. Team Fortress 2. If anyone wants to play, let me know. All time favorite video game of ever all time. Number four. What sports do you like to watch and or play slash do? <laughs> this is a hot take. I'll, I'll, I'll start us off by probably making someone mad out there. I don't like sports uh, almost at all. Uh, when I was growing up, my dad was like this huge sports dude, and it was like, we got to like, like, my middle name is Ryan, named after Nolan Ryan from the MLB. That is how much my dad was a sports guy. And when I was growing up, I was like, uh, and my dad tried to force me into these sports, so now I don't really like sports almost at all. And then a quick little story, and this is totally just anecdotal, and this is, can't really be applied to most sports in general, but it made me, like, I broke my ankle in high school 
playing football. And when I broke my ankle, not a single member of my team or my coaches showed up to the hospital just to see if I was okay. I went to the hospital. I got a seven-inch plate and seven screws in my ankle because of this. Not a single person cared. And I was like, man, I thought that they were supposed to be my team. So I never played another team sport again because I know that they never cared. So that was that was my really horrible experience with sports. So I don't watch sports. Uh, I did skateboard when I was in like high school. I like skateboarding because it's like a personal sport. You know, no one is helping you skateboard. That was just for me. Uh, I was never really any good, but it was fun to do. And that's that's about it for sports. Right on. Um, so the only sports I watch um, on TV, I watch one sport a year, and that is the Super Bowl. Uh, in real life, I really enjoy watching hockey. Uh, it's a really fun sport to watch. I actually really enjoy that. My family really likes to go to a lot of those games. The only sport I actively play is trap shooting. It's a sport. It's an Olympic sport. So, yes, check yourself. Um, so <laughs> what? what is it? Trap shooting. Trap shooting. Is, what is uh, that? Shooting clay what? It's a toy. Yeah. You, just, you take a shotgun, and then they clay pigeons are these little round clay discs. That's oh, wait, okay, okay. I know what that is. I've never heard it referred to as trap shooting. This is how little I know it's, about sports now. Well, that's what it's called, trap shooting. I, I think that's okay. the term anyways. Uh, Today I learned. <laughs> sometimes call it uh, shooting skeet, uh, but whatever. Like, that's sport I enjoy playing. It's fun. Okay. Go ahead, yeah. Christian. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I am actually a big sports enthusiast. Um uh, That's it. You're off the show. Yeah, right. Okay. No, uh, <laughs> uh, Calder, uh, Calder, and I when we met in Chicago a while back, like I literally in between matches, I would turn on the you know the Notre Dame game because I'm a huge Notre Dame uh, fan, and I would watch it while I'm waiting for the next match to start. So, it, and uh, every every fall that comes around, uh, my wife likes to ask, "So are you really just gonna devote?" every Saturday to watch the football. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to watch every, you know, every Saturday I'm going to watch the football because that's I have college football is my jam. Like, did you name any of your children's names after a sports figure? No, no. All my, all my, oh, thank God. All, all my children's <laughs> names are God given dude. Like before we even know the gender, it's like God puts a name on our hearts and we're oh, and right like, on. in unison, in unison. Okay. We just say, Hey, this is our child's name. And like, yeah, that's totally what, and so yeah, that's just the way it works in our house. I made the decision to ask Calder where he got his name from one time. Terrible, terrible story. decision. <laughs> Never ask me about my name. Hey Calder, <laughs> how'd you get your name? Great question. I'll answer that right after number five. What TV shows, movies, and books do you like? Only a uh, comic book. Uh, they'll say comic book and non-comic book books. So go okay. TV show, movies, okay, we- and books. Okay, okay, I'll start. So TV shows, I actually still really like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's it's really good. Um, Altered Carbon, if you've never seen that, that was really good. The Umbrella Academy recently was really pretty good. Black Mirror is actually, oh. I, I, I do actually personally believe that a lot of things that are in Black Mirror will come to pass in the future. Oh, yeah. Because I, I honestly believe that that is how our technology is moving. Like, we'll get – not all of it. I'm not saying it's like Nostradamus predicting <laughs> the future. I'm saying, like, there's going to become a tipping point where, like, we've gotten way too – like, our britches do not fit anymore because we let technology just ramp up way too far. So I like – I really like Black Mirror. That's a good show because um, it plays with your – your, your psyche a lot. Mm. Um, as far as, what was it, other than TV shows? Movies? Yep, movies and books. Um, I have a line from the Boondock Saints tattooed across my chest because I'm that guy. Uh, so I really like that movie. Um, and, but then other than that, that's one of the only like uh, types of movies like that that I like. The rest of the movies that are my favorite of all time movies are all comedies Mm -hmm. Uh, when i sit down to watch a movie i want all of my movies to be the stupid stupidest raunchiest bullcrap that is not actually worth your time to watch (laughs) but i will rewatch it again and again and again so examples uh biodome basketball half baked uh tom tommy boy yes those kind of movies are just like my go-to like these actually make me happy when i sit down to watch a movie i don't really want to think i just want to laugh oh yeah books books i read only nonfiction. uh for books a lot of about history 
uh, belt rule. I, I, I'm in the throes of becoming a World War II buff uh, because ha- almost half of my books are all about World War II, and I actually sit down and read them. Um, I'm about to finish another one. Uh, so one of these days I, I actually might consider myself one of those people. It's like, yeah, I know too, way too much about World War II. Um, and then, like, a lot of philosophical books I will read. I, I think I, I made a dichotomy where it's like if I want to think, I'll read. And if I don't want to think, I'll watch movies, if that makes sense. Mm. So that's kind of kind of where my mind ended up. What about you, Christian? Yeah, sure. Um, was, oh, gosh, where, where should I start? Uh, shows, um, man, like you said, Black Mirror is just fantastic. It's just great to watch. Uh, the, the Last Kingdom, um, I don't know if you ever watched that one. That one was really cool. Just anything about, like, Norse mythology, because that's kind of, like, where my family hails from is uh, from Nor- Norway. Um, from gods, yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, uh, and then um, Friends, like, my wife and I could put that on and just watch that, like, on repeat and just have it in the background, like, when we're cleaning or whatever, spanking children, because yeah. that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> People Please just don't think write just... in and tell us not to spank children. Yeah. Okay, pe- it's a joke. Yeah. Calm down. People think I beat my children all the time. That's not the truth. But, um, man, uh, movies, uh, I have certain directors that I really like, um, like Guy Ritchie, Quentin Tarantino, Mel Brooks, um, Mel, man, Mel, I, I would probably say Mel Brooks films are like some of my favorites to watch. Just because they're just so ridiculous, like Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, like you, Chris, uh, just stupid comedy films like Tommy Boy is definitely one of my favorites. Talladega Nights is probably one of my all-time favorites as well. Mm, uh, yeah. Just you know stuff like that. Uh, books. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the author, author uh, Jim Butcher. Uh, he wrote the uh, Dresden Files. Um, that sounds familiar. The the author does not. Yeah, yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So um, he that that stuff he's written is is really uh, really entertaining. But uh, like science fiction is uh ten, tends to be what I gravitate towards when I read. Right on. Okay. Uh, so, movies, kind of keep it simple. I pretty much only watch what most people consider to be, quote-unquote, like, popular cult classic whatever movies, so it's a lot of... Like, bro back then. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I've actually never seen it. A lot of people tell me I should. I'm definitely never going to watch it. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal is pretty amazing, though, but... Uh, no, I really like, like Star Wars, Indiana Jones. I watch a lot of that. Any, you know, superhero movie ever I watch. Um, my all-time favorite movie I can watch countless times is Army of Darkness. All-time favorite TV show is Ash vs. Evil Dead, just because we got to see more of him. Uh, I really enjoy Stranger Things, uh, that's for sure. Uh, just, uh, that's a good show. There's, there's a lot of great, like, TV shows out there, you know? I'm really not a TV person. I forced myself to watch The Office. Never doing that again. I really did not. Oh, man, um, I, I know a lot of people do, but it's not my kind of humor. It was very incredible. Letter to... Kenny. Letter Kenny. Letter yes. Kenny. Now that's a TV show I can pretty much countlessly rewatch. Uh, that's a freaking awesome show. I love. I, that. I have to ask you a question, Calder. What's like, up? I know you're a big Bruce Campbell fan. Yes. Uh, you ever watch Bubba Hotep? I see. That's, that's on my list. I hear it is terrible. I hear it's a really good. Really <laughs> but it's a, oh man. But I really it's it's on my list. Yeah. To, I actually bought a bunch of Bruce Campbell DVDs, um, and I want to get through them eventually. Uh, but it's 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 honestly it's hard to find a time to sit down and watch a movie. Um, let's say like go to theaters or whatever. So yeah, I, I like all kinds of movies. I already kind of covered TV shows, books. Uh, I I'm on the real with you. I I read a lot of the same book. Um, and then there's comic books. Really, I am not a book person. Uh, I'll get out of my... Elbow. We can tell. Once, yeah, you can totally tell. Uh, I, <laughs> Louis L'Amour, he is a Western uh, book writer. Uh, they're very short, quick little stories. They're all relatively the same. Uh, he sticks to a pattern. And then I also like uh, Ernest Hemingway. He's one of my favorite authors. I actually really like a lot of his books. I like his characterizations of characters. Um, so that's for uh, for any actual like book nerd fans. Ernest Hemingway is my one smart sounding guy, and people actually kind of hate him. So there we go. Uh, so that's okay. Uh, stuff. I, I would throw this in because it was in there. Uh, we we all forgot it. What is the what is a comic book? Just name one title. If you were gonna read it, what would it be, Carter? I assume it's Captain. Uh, I'll actually go Howard the Duck. 
Okay, okay, cool. That's actually threw me for a loop, but cool. Uh, what about you, Christian? Uh, Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight Returns as a graphic novel? Yep. Okay, all right, that's good. And I think mine is going to be Moon Knight, actually. Right. I think it's really interesting, weird dynamic. Okay, next question. My very last question is going to be really easy. Is What countries have you visited, and which countries do you want to go to? That That's... Okay, actually, I want to eat all this time up. You guys start. <laughs> Chris, Chris uh, I will start. Uh, so that one last time. Oh, okay. Uh, so I have been to all the countries in Epcot. Uh, Epcot. <laughs> in Disney World, Florida. I have never <laughs> left the U.S. of A., and I do not plan on doing it anytime soon because there's only one country that's worth living in, and that is America. Now, I might visit. You. <laughs> I, I might. I might visit some other countries. It depends on who I'm with. My brothers have been talking about a boys' trip to Japan, which sounds great, so we can be taller than everyone, I guess. I honestly don't know, besides me yelling anime at people, I don't know what I will do there. Uh, going to other countries has literally never interested me, but if there's somebody else that would make the trip worth going with, someone who maybe has a bit more adventure spirit than I do, then yeah, sure, let's go do it. But until then, I U.S. of A, baby, American soil. That's what I like. Okay. Christian! Uh, I've only been... In the USA, I mean that's it. Uh, but um, I know my wife and I would like to go to Ireland, and like I said, it would be fun to go to Norway to kind of, you know, see where my ancestors grew up. But uh, I I loved uh, like I can't say loved. Um, World War Two interested me greatly, so it would be fun to kind of go see like old battle sites, uh, you know, in in Germany and England and France and you know that uh, in, in Belgium and whatnot. Uh, and then um, in the medieval times, going to see castles over you know in the same countries and, uh, and and I think like the ultimate romantic getaway, I guess for my wife and I would be um, um, Italy and you know Greece. Oh, man. Okay. So, well, you know what? Let's start with, can I do a history lesson? Like a really short history lesson? Yeah. Is that okay with yeah. you guys? Okay. So, um, it, it is now common stance. Like, everyone thinks, oh, yo, that's definitely always been there. No, it actually has not. If you were in World War II, you were a U.S. soldier, and you died in the Euro European theater of operation or actually in the Pacific, um, they didn't immediately ship your body home. In fact, you had to pay for it yourself. Uh, your family had to pay for it uh, if they wanted your body back. And during World War II, there were not a ton of affluent families that could pay for their soldiers and uh, Marines and whatever to all of those to get sent back home. So I wanted to bring this up because I've actually been to one of these. This particular one was in the Netherlands, and it, it just astounded me how uh, cool it was and how much I will appreciate Countries like the Netherlands for doing this, and the Netherlands is not the only country that did this. Uh, Belgium, France, and a few other countries did this as well. But if uh, American uh, servicemen uh, did not uh, have the ability to get shipped home, they actually buried them in American-specific cemeteries that were devoted to to American servicemen uh, uh -huh. over in those countries. So as, as, a, shy, as a, a show of uh, respect and reverence for the American effort to do what they did during World War II. So it was really cool to, like, I went to this one in the Netherlands that uh, all of the headstones are, it looks very, very similar to Arlington National Cemetery, mm -hmm. uh, where all of the headstones are lined up in kind of a curve. And you can just it's, – it's very uh, humbling and very cool that uh, those countries were willing to do that uh, just to show respect. So that was really cool. Yeah, that is uncool. Um, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, let's see. So as far as countries go, I'm just going to say I've been to 19 of them at this point. And I'll just – I've been on five continents, 19 countries. And I'll just tell you what my favorite ones were. Uh, instead of going through the 19. Uh, so my favorite place that I've ever been was Rome. I loved Rome mm. so much. Uh, Bulgaria was an amazing place that I went to. I really, really liked Bulgaria. It was just such a lack, or a lax, I'm sorry, a lax atmosphere. Um, that was really cool. The, the Dutch are extremely nice 
to Americans. Uh, at least that was my experience. So I, I'm really, really fond of the Netherlands. Um, the Greeks are also really, really fond of us. That was my experience. So uh, that was really cool. And I'll, I'll tell you a couple of places I didn't really enjoy that much. Um, I went to Egypt. That was okay. Um, I will never go back to Egypt, though. Um, and then there's some countries in Central America that I was not a huge fan of. Um, I did go to Costa Rica and Nicaragua, and while they were very, very pretty, uh, I will probably never return to those countries. So that's kind of my thing is I just love to travel, and I'm, I'm the exact opposite of Calder. So <laughs> if I can make it to a brand-new place, I'm going to. I mean, I'll place. totally go, but I'm not going to go by myself and be like, yup, that's a Scott, man. Like, what is <laughs> No, man, that's the best part. Like, you just show up in a random country with no plan, you know what? and you just – and you just go. Right. I'm going like, to show up, it, like, and I'm going to fight the biggest dude there. First trip, <laughs> rush up. <laughs> no more trips after like, like, that, I'll be dead. <laughs> it, it is really it is really a, uh, a self-discovery thing when you show up in, like, the middle. Like, I just showed up in the middle of Bulgaria, like, in Sofia, which is their capital. And I was like, I have no plan. Jaylene and I had no plan. We just showed up and then randomly wandered through Bulgaria. So, like, <laughs> phrase cool. Here. Uh, Jamie, uh, just yeah, just saying. I've <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, close family friends that actually are missionaries in Bulgaria. Yeah, the place is awesome. Yeah, uh, we've <laughs> had some. In. Yeah, we've we've had some of their uh, uh, local cuisine uh, when uh, when they they had uh, just had a graduation party for their um, third youngest or like their third child or whatever. But yeah, so that was. Interesting. They had like these wafer bars that were actually like Nutella wafer bars. Those were really good. Oh, Nutella is like crazy popular in Europe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was actually where I first learned that Nutella was a thing. <laughs> I was like, what is it? What is it? Why are there commercials for this? What is it? I'm like, oh, okay. And then it finally made it over to the United States. So, um, anyway, you should, you, Calder, you got to go. You got to make it out of the country. You, you will, you will learn. If you are similar to me, you will learn to appreciate what we truly have here when you see what else is in the oh, rest of the world. And there's some amazing, sure, sure, amazing sure, places sure, sure, out sure, there. Uh, sure. But you will appreciate what we have here uh, a lot of the time. That's my experience. So uh, is that, That's it, though. That's it for questions, right? That is it. That is Dr. Marsh's question block. Again, thank you so much for sending us these questions in. They're always a joy. I always really enjoy answering them, I know, for sure. <laughs> I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. No, I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> Can you ask good questions? Okay, okay. Yeah. No, I, I genuinely... Um, I, I have always appreciated you sending in the questions, uh, Malcolm, so please continue to do that. Uh, and if, if, if nothing else, it makes us think and stand, like, be up on our toes willing to answer these questions <laughs> sometimes. Because, like, legit, like, we don't always read the email before we start recording, and then it's like, oh, I guess we're answering questions. Oh, I didn't even think about that, so we're just making up answers on the spot. <laughs> So that is that's, that's how the sausage is made. Hey guys. man, it's hashtag good podcasting. That's, that's the eternal sausage. <laughs> the sausage. So, um, uh, then we we didn't get any emails this week. If you want to send us oh, an email, you can send it to. Oh, yeah, I was, to say, no, I was about to say. That email Wait, from a guy what? in the show right now. Yeah. <laughs> what? What I miss? See, I'm glad I checked the Gmail today because <laughs> Chris wasn't doing his job. Did you really? We have Did an, my phone? We have an email from super fan, uh, Christian Bogan. Uh, oh, my God. I just wanted to that. say thanks for being such an awesome podcast host. That leaks will definitely not be the same without you, Chris. I really enjoyed listening to all the stuff you came up with to talk about the changes you made to the show. Thanks for the laughs and insightful comments, the kind words, and most importantly, thank you for your service, not only to the podcast, but to our country as well. You are really an amazing person. Good luck in life, brother. I'll be praying for you, your wife. Not sure on how to... Ah, it's Jaylene. You need to say it over there. No one knows how you spelt it. And hopefully I didn't embarrass myself. Anyways, he does have one question. Maybe we could discuss it on the podcast. If you could have one power, which would you choose? Okay, so first of all, seriously, thank you for the email. That You nailed Jaylene's spelling, by the way. That is how you spell it. Sweet. Um, and, then, and then, of course, uh, I... I I have some words um, to say, 
but not yet. Mm. So we'll, we'll get yep. to that. But uh, you, the answer to your question is totally easy for me because I've known this answer for years. Telekinesis, buddy. Like telekinesis has so many applications because you hear people who are like, oh, I just I would I would fly. Some people are like, oh, I would have uh, super strength. With telekinesis, you have all of these powers. Okay, so you have flight because you have telekinesis. Uh, you can condense molecules in the air around you to a point where they're impenetrable, so you have force fields. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a character like uh, Superboy, who apparently, from my knowledge, he doesn't actually have super strength. It's a telekinetic super strength, but it is a very localized telekinesis. So it looks like... He has super strength, like he's picking up trucks and throwing them, when in all actuality, it's telekinesis. Mm. So, like, I, I, like, Magneto is super awesome to me, always was, like, picking stuff up, but that's too limited, right? So you have Marvel Girl or Jean Grey, whatever you want to call her, and I was like, man, there's so many applications for telekinesis, so many cool things you could do. And then, then like, I was never a huge fan of, uh, of Jean Grey, but then... Later on in the comics, in X-Men specifically, they introduced a character that I fell in love with who had the exact same power set that I was like, yeah, this is it. I cannot wait to see what this guy does with it, and that's Hellion. Oh, like, yeah. Hellion is such a cool character to me because he's such a jerk. He gets his arms lobbed off I think, <laughs> in, in the, ne the Necrotia storyline, which is why he has metal arms and i'm like man one of these days i just hope that they keep using this character because it's everything i like about a character because I, I don't like gene gray's personality i like hellion's personality and he has an awesome power set so that's that's definitely what i would pick telekinesis all day every day right on uh, i'm gonna do a different telly and that's gonna be uh teleportation uh nightcrawler this is kind of like going on the x-men thing but like those are my favorite x-men i don't want his teleportation i want like a like, ah, what's the address? That's the address. Boop, teleport there. Just go anywhere in the world, anywhere in the country. I don't like driving. I'm so used to living on a small ranch in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, you know what? I, <laughs> I want to still live here. I don't want to live in some big city where I'm going to hate everyone around me. I still want to live here, but I just want to teleport like, ah, boom, in a comic shop. Like, thank you, guys. I'm going to play Hero Clicks here this week. Awesome. Like, that's it. It's the only reason even to live in a big city is to play Hero Clips there. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you know what? I want Wendy's. Boop, teleport to a Wendy's. I don't want to live near all these stupid people and all these stupid problems. <laughs> I want to live on my ranch, but I want all the good stuff still. I still want all that goodness. I want to go to Walmart quick if I want a pair of underpants. I don't know. Like, if I want pizza, I can go Pizza Hut or Domino's or whatever. Teleportation. That's the power. You want the good pizza, and you chose Pizza Hut and Domino's. Yeah. <laughs> You are a man of culture. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, teleportation. I can live wherever I want. I'm like, you know what? If I want something, boop, I can go get it. Then I don't have to pay for it's, gas. Hey, as long as you make that sound effect every time you, you teleport, boop, boop, boop. That would not bam. That's hot, right? <laughs> uh, like, I love how when you chose teleportation, you chose the single worst teleporter in all I know time. he is, but, like, I would, obviously I want to do better where I don't teleport myself into the side of a building and, like, die. <laughs> like, there is, there is so many better Kurt, teleporters Kurt's the man. Than Kurt's the man. Okay, you, you, you have, you have Gateway. I don't you, care you about have, Gateway. Kurt's uh, a chain. You have Lockjaw. He's a dog. Uh, you, like, he's a dog. Uh, is he? We don't oh. know. Because they keep kind of trying to retcon it, whether he was a, as a human shape and then he went through terogenesis and turned into a dog, or was he a dog first who happened to have an inhuman trait or a gene and then he got power? No one knows at this point. We'll see, I guess. Give it give it 20 years and they might have finally locked down what Lockjaw actually is. All right, Christian, <laughs> answer your question, man. Let's see, answer let's my own question. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's to manipulate matter. Basically, I guess similar to what Scarlet Witch does, because wait, well, like like that's what I was thinking. Was manipulate power, man, actually, or ma matter, because like uh, t technically, technically Scarlet Witch's powers are more like um, it's ca she can tap into chaos magic oh, okay. and make really weird things happen, but she can affect matter sometimes. Obviously, as seen in like the House of M story. Yeah. Like, so. You mean like like Molecule Man, where you can like turn things into other things and then like bend the space time continuum? Yeah, after? I guess that would be more. Yeah, uh, he he's dumb powerful, by the way. Like, except he's absolutely. a wuss baby, so we don't have to worry about him. Okay. Except for that he tapped into the other multi-dimensional versions and found cooler versions of himself that weren't a little wuss. Baby. <laughs> so he'd probably just be one of the better versions. So speaking of multi multiverse. 
have one of the uh, titles to the upcoming films from San Diego Comic Con was Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So, <laughs> so it is confirmed that there will be a, a multiverse. Is it though? Is it really though? Well, I don't know. It's mm, supposed to be Marvel's know. first horror film, so this should be interesting. Good. Good. Oh, because yeah, I want to see Doctor Strange get killed a bunch of times, so like he was the last time, except more gruesome. <laughs> right. be great. I've come to bargain uh, ripped in half. Uh, they did also because they're going full swing into the upcoming movies, kind of like you, what you just said. But the one that I'm actually interested in seeing is the Shang Chi movie yeah. because they announced who it was that was going to be playing Shang Chi, and it, it, I can't, uh, I'll look up his name real quick. Ben but it's the same right? guy from uh, if you guys have ever seen Kim's Convenience Store. Where's my wife? Where you? You've seen it. You know the guy. He's in there. Uh, the older one, the one that is like works at a, yeah, the, she says the cute one. Yes, that one. He's playing Shang Chi. I'll look up his name in a minute. So I'm like genuinely, like that's that's gonna be awesome. Well, I'm glad someone's excited for Shang Chi. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, it does look in, uh, like I am kind of excited about it. Is it Donnie Yen? I'm, I'm looking it up right now. I'll give you just give me a second. Kim's. I'm, I'm here for Blade. Like, Blade is... That's it. I guess Wait, Thor. Blade is a thing? Yeah, Blade, man. They, they Mar- Marshall Ali. So, Cotton Owl. Uh, so, that means Netflix is totally disregarded as whatever. Like, no one cares. That's, that was never really part of it, since they're going to have the same guy who's Cotton Owl be Blade. So, that just goes to show... And I know they had the one chick uh, who was Stokes, Mariah Stokes. She was actually... <laughs> So, yeah, Netflix, Netflix is definitely disconnected from the MCU. It's a bit of a bummer, but that's okay. All right, so it's his name is, I'm probably am butchering this, Simu, Simu Lee. No, that's totally his name. That's it. You got it. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Connor. Uh, uh, so that's going to be, like, legitimately cool. And because they, I totally know that they're hearkening back to, like, Bruce Lee, they're going to make it a kung fu movie. It is going to be a, like kind of uh, an homage to old Bruce Lee movies in what I'm expecting for them to do. So nice. I cannot wait for a Marvel Kung Fu movie. Yes. It's going to be awesome. As long as they have bad voice dubs, that's all I'm worried about. Yes! Yes! That was great. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Well, I think we are. Now, are we finally out of community? Are we done? Yes. Now we're done. We are done. Okay. Uh, sorry. Oh, hold on. I, hold on. Disrespect. I, no. No. <laughs> uh, are we out of community? Because you still have to talk about why you hate ranch so much. Oh, yeah, you did ask to. me about that. Oh, goodness. This is a horrible story. This is, like, a really disgusting story. Uh, okay, so uh, back back in when I was in high school, uh, I had a friend, and her name was M. And M had a car, and I did not. And uh, she asked me, she's like, hey, do you want to hang out? Uh, this afternoon or something like that. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Do you want to come pick me up? So she comes and picks me up. And I get into her car. And in my, like, 15-year-old mind, I guess I thought it was probably cool to see what was in in M's car. So I reach under the seat, and M worked at McDonald's when she was in high school. So I reach under the seat, and I find... A, you know those packs of ranch that you get from McDonald's with the little aluminum foil top yes. that's super incredibly thin? Yeah. Okay. Well, M at this point had worked at McDonald's for quite a few years. And I pick it, I pull this out, and I was like, what's this under here? And she's like, oh, my Lord, that's probably been under there for like two years because I've not brought branch into this car since. And I'm like, huh, Okay. So I put this package of ranch in my pocket for some reason, okay? (laughs) Remember, 15-year-old logic, okay? (laughs) I think that maybe I thought it was going to be one of those situations where, ooh, I'll we'll be driving real fast and I can hang out the door and, and like, at the car window and, like, throw it at, like, a stop sign or something. I don't know. Once again, I was an idiot (laughs) when I was 15. So this is in my pocket. She goes, hey, I need to drive to the bank. So I was like, whatever. So we drive to the bank. We were in line at the ATM. It had rained pretty heavily that day. So she's next in line for the ATM 
to pull up to. And I uh, outside of the car, immediately to the right, is this enormous mud puddle that is probably about three to four inches deep. So it was about this time when, for some reason, the package explodes in my pocket. And it is rancid ranch dressing that apparently has been in a vehicle for like two years through multiple hot summers that has just exploded in my pocket. So I don't know what to do, and I panic. And the window, I roll it down real quick because the smell is so horrible. And then I start leaning out of the car. And I was like, oh, my God, it smells so bad. I lean out so far that because it had rained and there was water on the side of the car, I slipped and fell out of the window into a four-inch deep water puddle on the outside of this car. Instead of doing the rational thing like, open the door and get out of the car. No, I fall into this puddle. When I fall into the puddle, the the ranch dressing gets even further running de- all over my leg. Right? Oh, like cause it's like it's not it's not solid in any it's not like even semi solid in any capacity. It's like water. Ugh. So it runs every it's everywhere. So I can smell it, there's no escaping it. I'm in a water puddle, a mud puddle, and I start puking into a mud puddle. <laughs> And so I'm hands, I'm on my hands and knees in this mud puddle, puking. So now I have rancid ranch dressing, mud water, in my own vomit, which is now getting all over my arms and my legs from puking into this puddle. So at this point, M is like, oh my God, what is happening right now? So I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know what to do. I was like, I was like... (laughs) <laughs> so she's like hold on let me pull up she pulls away so i don't have to walk th- oh, like i jump out of the mud puddle and i walk over and she has a towel inside of like her trunk so she gets a towel out and she's like do not get any of that on the rest of my car sit on this towel so i sit on the towel and she's like what do, where do you want me to take you? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so we end up driving. We end up, <laughs> we end up driving to our local park that has an active fountain in the park. So I'm 15 years old in the middle of a park covered in all of that that I just mentioned. And I get out of the car and I literally just start bathing in the park's fountain trying to wash away all of my shame so uh so that that's why i hate ranch so much is because i have such a horrible (laughs) scarring memory of ranch dressing um so now anytime anytime anyone gets anywhere remotely near me with ranch dressing and i smell it it's like a flashback to that moment in my life, and that is why I hate ranch dressing so much. So there you go. There's the whole story. You, you never told me that your life was actually a slapstick Adam Sandler comedy movie. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a terrible, <laughs> unfortunate series of events that all unfolded there. Oh, God. Could you imagine being, like, somebody in a car next to you and this, see this kid worm his that way out? That voice fell out of the window and started it's throwing like... up in that mud puddle. <laughs> so... Uh, I actually, believe it or not, I have lots of weird stories like that from my life that I have never told you, Calder. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just, I, there's lots of weird things that have happened to me over over the years now, so hopefully it'll it'll calm down. Now never want I, it to. I never <laughs> want it to. <laughs> hopefully my life will calm down as I enter the military, <laughs> as I regretfully say. As I'm thinking about it, as I'm trying to say it out loud, that sounds so stupid. So, um, yeah, that happened. Um, so there's you should have told me that. That's that's <laughs> great. I'm gonna tell so many people. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just if you are trying to get someone interested in listening to Dial H for Hero Clicks, listeners, <laughs> Just play them episode. that segment of this episode <laughs> and be like, "What is happening? I must know more." And then you can listen to really stupid things like that. So, hi, new listeners. Welcome to Die. <laughs> Bad dad jokes and horrible stories about puking with ranch dressing. It's... Well, you know. Oh, there is. Sausage the... Gunna Eternal. Sausage. 
<laughs> sausage gonna eternal. Oh, yeah, sausage baby. gonna eternal. Excuse me. So, all right. Well, thank you, Christian. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on to the podcast. <laughs> what a weird way to wrap up. But thank you for coming on to the podcast. I really, really enjoyed having you, uh, not only as a listener, uh, but as our super fan and now someone who kind of pseudo regularly comes onto the podcast, I really appreciate everything that you've done for our community. You know, it really is like it's it's awesome. I mean, just being able to uh, talk with you guys and to really interact with you guys. But you know, Chris, you importantly that just the step that you're making towards the military and serving our country and everything. That's like I mean, wear that with pride because that's that's important. And and I always have you know, the highest respect for, for men who, who do that, who would lay down their lives for their own country. So I want to, I just want to say you from the, you know, deepest part of my heart, thank you. And, you know, I, I really do wish you the best. You are absolutely welcome. And I, I've, I've heard this from people that have said this in certain lines of work. They're like, I, I wouldn't have done anything other than what I'm doing now. I, I'm positive that that's going to be my mentality mm -hmm. as I go through it. Like that, that was always the natural step for me. So uh, hopefully I make you guys proud out there. So that's going to be really cool. Um, you out there in podcast land, having just learned that Dial H, is a, uh, Dial H for Heroclix is a thing and you got to hear that wonderful ranch story, um, you can follow us on Twitter at Dial H for Heroclix. That is the number four. Uh, you can search for us and find us on Facebook dialage for hero clicks where we post the memes if you're interested in the memes calder's really good at making those got a sick sense of humor and i've always really appreciated that so uh i think i think that's it uh before thanos snaps me out of existence calder do you have anything else you want to say you know i um almost this has been an awesome journey like seriously this has been a great uh like my life so took an amazing turnaround with this podcast and you're a part of that and it's going to be really different. It's going to be really hard with action, man. And I just want to say this on air because it, it really meant a lot. Your friendship and everything that we've done, like pretty much the only guy I talk to every single week for a couple hours a week has been Chris for these past two years. And it's really just not going to be the same without you. And I'm, I'm really excited for where you're going to be going in life. And I just want to thank you so much uh, for all the time you've done for this community and uh, for me personally. I, you are absolutely welcome, but seriously, thank you. Um, I, like I said earlier, I, I hinted at it. Um, I, I'm just going to kind of spoil it now. I didn't want to put everything that I wanted to say in this episode. Um, I am going to sit down here actually in probably a little bit or tomorrow, and I'm going to put out uh, my final farewell to everyone. Uh, I, I had to write it down uh, because it was just important, and I didn't want it to be all off the cuff. I didn't want to forget a bunch of things. So um, I'll respond to all of that and everything uh, in, in what I'm about to do. But uh, it has been a, an amazing journey for me, uh, and I really appreciate it. And then also uh, thank you, everybody, that has been out there and been part of the community. Uh, and just even if you have never written in or anything like that, if you continue to listen to this podcast, it was because – you had that mentality where this is, it's it's a game, and there's a lot more important things than just this game, and that's what we always tried to I I thought convey. So uh, I'll put more of that in the next thing, but um, that's that's all I've got for two. Absolutely. Then if we are good, I will read us out of here. Yes, As sir. a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can buy. Yeah, you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest HeroClick singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. All right. Bye, Happy guys. Happy trails. Okay, I would be a little bit remiss if I didn't put a few of these sound bites in here just because they have made me happy over the years. So I just wanted to play a few of them like this. Oh, my God! Woo! Listen to that horn! Uh, this one. You see my downstairs mix-up? Yeah, I didn't ask to see that, did I? I'm all grand. God, I hope this is a nostalgia trip for some of these people like it has been for me. Woo! Oh!